what's up everyone i just want to make a quick disclaimer the blue beetle non-spoiler review starts like around at 47 minutes and i know you're probably wondering what the fuck's going on it's because in the beginning of the pod i said that hey we have a few questions you know i think we could knock them out we don't got to do it at the end of the episode but you know i was wrong you know how we get we go on tangents we uh we, you know what I mean? And it was, we were already 47 minutes in without even doing the uh, review. So I'm just giving a disclaimer right now in the beginning of the pod. So if you want to skip ahead to the non-spoiler section for Blue Beetle, go around, um, skip to around 47 minutes, right? And then shortly after the non-spoiler, we get into the spoiler, uh, spoiler discussion. But yeah, I just want to you know, give a quick disclaimer. But if you don't care and you just want to listen, you also want to listen to us, um, answer the questions and you know you know how we are right then uh yeah just keep listening uh, but yeah i just want to give that quick disclaimer sorry about that guys i should have fucking known and we'll definitely uh answer the questions and stuff at the end of the show as my mistake uh but yeah let's get back into it yo what's up everyone welcome back to the hero vision podcast and i got myself hector also known as c6 and with me i got jazzy Oh shit! <laughs> Hold up, yo. I guess we should explain. Yo, Mario, real Mario quick. I'm just like, <laughs> I like, I, 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 I did the Anakin Skywalker. If you know, you know, with the two fingers. <laughs> just, just, just to give y'all a little update. Um, we're um, we're down two mics. Um, we usually have four. I've broke one, and the other one died on us. <laughs> <laughs> and so the, so we got to share my bad we got to share two mics right now oh uh, don't worry we're gonna get back to our usual like three mics that we just gotta order it real quick but yeah i'm here jazzy and to my left is uh cool, uh, i was about to say cool vibes <laughs> into yeah, my works. left into that my works. left that works i'll take it uh, <laughs> yeah i'll take cool vibes and uh go ahead yeah guys so that's what's that's what's happening that's uh we apologize like this was unexpected yeah you know what I mean? And we're not going to hold off because just because we waited a week to um, watch uh, Blue Beetle, which we'll get to that in a bit. But yeah, guys, um, I just want to remind you guys that you can listen to us on Spotify, Apple, Google, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Make sure you follow our socials at He Revision Podcast. Go to He Revision Podcast. Dot com you'll see all of our links through there also make sure you follow our second youtube channel called hero vision clips that's where we we'll upload all of our clips or if you don't have enough time to listen to the whole podcast we'll post all the highlights through there make sure you follow our main page called heat ray vision to stay up to date with any geek news and films tv and video games the socials are at heat ray vision or go to heat to find all of our socials all the links will be down in the description below but yeah guys we're gonna be reviewing um blue beetle yeah all right yeah blue beetle and um the reason why we haven't we didn't see it the the fall uh, the past this past weekend was because mario wasn't wasn't able to mm-hmm. wait Not, i was saturday when we usually hang we wanted oh. Oh. i was able to on saturday but javi wouldn't be there and so then we were like oh, oh it's yeah. like a sunday and then i forgot that i agreed to go so to mario like, chicago like i agreed to go to this like like this like air show that they were having in the city yeah like two weeks before we changed up the date yeah and i forgot it was on a sunday i was like yo my bad bro like y'all go without me like do the review without me it's fine like i'm not like i'm gonna say shit either way right how are you i mean not how you mario bitch man but uh that's why they want they, i told them like it's cool like i understand right yeah but they're, they're these guys are you know they're my boys they're like nah bro we ain't letting that shit slide yeah so like, later a week i would have gone too <laughs> yeah but it's just it's just the fact that uh danny oh yeah and danny to, Danny yeah. was supposed to come. Danny was supposed to come, but he bailed either way, so whatever. But either way, we all were able to see it. That's the only reason mm-hmm. why we took a week. Yeah. Uh, basically, guys. Uh, but before we get into it, uh, I just have a few questions I mean, uh, and shout-outs and stuff. And, you know, a few comments. Like, the first comment. We usually yes. we usually leave this segment at the end. Yeah. But we're doing it. We're switching it up because you said it's not a lie. We could just kind yeah. of knock it out. Yeah, quick. yeah. It's not a lie. We can knock it out real fast, and then we'll get into the non-spoiler section of, of the of the of the movie. Then the then the spoiler section. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, the first thing because we already explained ourselves because Josue was like, "Yo, bro, I'm about to go see the movie. She was raw." Josue gave it a ten out of ten, bro. Damn. That's him, right? He's like, "See, that was good. Everything was dope." The movie was Hispanic based, bro. That's what I liked more about the movie. All this crap, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Yes, what's up, man?" Damn, then, you were you were reading all this before we went to go see the movie? Yeah. 
Damn, bro. I wonder if I wonder like were you ever right? Were you I don't ever, think it was spoiler or anything. Not sp- uh, cuz like what? Like cuz I already yeah, knew it was right. gonna be, I already knew it was going to be Mexican. Right, 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 right. But what I'm saying is like I, I don't know, man. I feel like reading like comments like that like early will influence your your think perspective. So? I don't know, maybe. I don't think so for me. I have a rating in mind. Me too. Uh but uh, but, but yeah, so then after that, right? I uh, he messaged me saying, "Bro, let me find out y'all going to watch Blue Beetle this weekend cuz of National Cinema Day, mm. which I was like, I had no, we had no idea what the that, fuck was, that a, was, yeah, well, that was a thing, because right now it's Saturday, right? It's Saturday, the t- August twenty sixth, mm-hmm. and it's not until tomorrow, the twenty seventh, twenty seventh. But no, bro, yeah, that's not the reason why, you know. We explained why. We already explained it. Yeah, I just wanted to bring that out there. Okay, so the first question is gonna, uh, it's gonna be from Sheldon, um, not Sheldon M, the other Sheldon, because uh, he says, um. Missed out on the 500 sub special. Been busy lately. Oh, good, bro. Uh, you guys are blowing up. Happy for y'all. One question is how How do you guys like the trailer for the Netflix Scott Pilgrim anime adaptation? Oh, fuck. It's an anime. Mario, you got this one, girl. Go ahead, Mario. This is my... Mario, a, uh, what is he? A, a otaku? Oh, or, or a weeaboo? <laughs> <laughs> Not weeaboo. Did you say otaku? Otaku. 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 <laughs> it's kind of like taco, but you put it on in front of it. <laughs> for real. <laughs> <laughs> un taco <laughs> un taco hell nah but nah uh, I, I think I, it looks cool it gives like, it gives cool. like gravity falls type vibe yeah, Johnny animation. Tess animation maybe. I don't get the Johnny Tess one I really don't see that no. I see gravity falls way more than Johnny Tess uh, I don't know man I just be I get Cartoon Network vibes yeah, that, that's for 110%, yeah. Right? <laughs> Maybe yeah, that's, that's a better explanation. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, we all... I remember when they announced the... Tra- uh, not announced, but they um, posted the trailer. I, for- I forgot how long ago. But uh, I never watched the full thing. Only just like the first couple seconds of it so I could see the animation because I was on break yeah. and I didn't want to waste my break watching that trailer. And uh, But we watched it right before we recorded this pod. And from what we know... From what I Googled up, this, this, what this, and this, I guess you, do I call it an anime? I mean, I guess, right? Uh, this anime, I think it's a show from what I read. It I think like it, it could be wrong. Correct us in the comments. But uh, it looks like it's going to be adapting the game and whatever the other original creator's work was. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be a di- direct reboot of the movie. Because apparently the movie left out a bunch of shit from the original work, which I never knew yeah, I didn't until know I Googled either. that shit up. But uh, it comes out in November, right? It said or December. I don't know. I forgot, but it's coming out this year. Uh, I'm for sure gonna check it out. You know, it anything cool. animated piques my interest already. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, what about you, Hector? Yeah, I thought it was. I thought it looks cool. I mean, I saw. I just saw the movie, the live action movie, when it uh, a long time ago, bro. Like I barely remember. I gotta watch it again. But I thought it was cool. The animation looks pretty cool. It looks like a chill type of like show. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, uh, what, what did you think of it, bro? Excuse me. Um, I mean, it was just a minute. I mean, we didn't really show a lot, to be honest. And I mean, it looks interesting, bro. But like, anime has not been a media that I've actually gotten into yet. Yeah. So to me, it didn't capture my attention all that much. On top of that, I had never seen the original Scott Pilgrim movie that came out back in mm-hmm. 09. Well, that was directed by uh, Edgar Wright and it had Michael Sarah and all those other people, right? I haven't seen that movie, but I've heard it's good. Mm. So, um, Edgar Wright, who was the director of the OG movie, he's not attached to this upcoming project. It's different oh, okay. people behind it. But they did bring all the original cast mm-hmm. from the movie to come back and voice their respective characters. Those are the only people that are coming back. So, with it being handled by um, a different group of creators, not yeah. the same director and writers, I think one of those things where you just don't know it might it could be good or it could be bad if it's not made from the same person like mm-hmm. yeah you just kind of you don't know but i mean i'll check it out i guess yeah you know what i mean i'll see what's up if it's something i just don't know because based on what i saw in the trailer like the animation style and all that it's not something that i typically go for that's why it, it's not something that that's it's fair. not something that i think willingly out of my way i would go watch yeah in my free time unless like we decided hey fuck it let's check it like out for I, the pot like i would want to check out uh the superman one. Oh, on uh superman on uh on uh on, uh, on adult swim yeah I the, the superman one, one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I heard that, that one's one. cool but i have i mean i haven't seen it that, i haven't seen that one either i haven't caught up with the fucking last few seasons of superman and lois 
I need to catch up on that, bro. It's a bunch of shit. But um, but uh, I mean, it looks interesting, bro. But like, I, like I said, typically it's not something that I think I would watch willingly, unless yeah. you, unless we were all like, "Fuck it, should we review it for the pod?" Right. In I mean, which we case, gotta see I, how long it is first. In, in which case, I'd be like, "All right, fuck it then." But yeah, like uh, willingly, yeah. I I wouldn't check it out. It's yeah. not something I'm marking on my calendar. Oh Cause, shit. Because as you guys know, man, like we want to review stuff that like we're mostly really interested in. You know, like I said, man, we have our own lives. We have our own things going on, so we can't necessarily review everything. If we're making hella revenue off of this shit, yeah, we would. We would try to review it as much <laughs> as we can, right? Because, like, that's all we're doing. But since we can't, I think that's why, like, we have to be really crucial and, like, be, be very selective of what we want to watch and review. For example, like, we didn't review Barbie. Because, like, because we, because it was Oppenheimer. We chose Oppenheimer, you know? we. But if we were, like, if we were able to do this full time, we would have seen both of them. You know what I mean? and But whatever. Okay, so his next question is, um, how do you guys feel about the recent trailer of the new Zack Snyder film and how it was supposed to be a Star Wars movie? He said... Or a part of the Star Wars universe. No, fuck no, it's not. It's not. And how it, he says, and how it was supposed to be a Star Wars movie or a part of the Star Wars universe. Oh, I think I heard about that. I think Zack Snyder was supposed to make a Star Wars movie with Disney and then something fell through. But he still wanted to make a Star Wars esque project, so he made Rebel Moon. Go ahead. I think he said he wanted to make an R rated Star Wars movie, and Disney said, "Fuck that." Yeah, I think that. I think you that's tripping. what it was. I think that's what it Come was. Come on, cowgirl. I I think that's what it was. I could be wrong because like this was like a small story, like it wasn't anything major. It's like yeah. kind of small, but I I think that's why it fell through because he wanted to make a first ever R rated movie. Could be wrong though. Could be something else. Just take that with a grain of salt though. Hmm. I mean, coming from an, like a not like I don't know shit about Star Wars, but like that should look fire. It looks cool. That look fire, bro. It looks cool. Rated R, type. but like we saw the teaser, and the yeah. teaser was nearly four minutes long. Yeah, even even after all of it, like I don't know what the plot is. Yeah. So but I it looks actually, cool though. I actually and the name sounds like a Star Wars shit. I was selling Hive because Rebel Moon. Like imagine Star Wars Rebel. That's Moon. That's because both those words are used a lot in Star Wars. Oh, yeah, yeah bro. So, anyways, I pulled up the premise for okay. Rebel Moon right here because I even I didn't know what the fuck was going on, bro. So, it says that the premise of Rebel Moon. In a universe controlled by the corrupt government of Mother World. Okay. Oh, Mother World. <laughs> the moon of Velt. That's a Dead Mouse song. Velt? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the moon of Velt is threatened by the forces of the Imperium. Imperium? It just sounds like the Empire. Look at Mario shaking his head. Like this Empires? is so much like Star Wars. Because the v- Imperials, that's well, what like, I'm thinking but, about. Well, that's what they always... But like, to be fair, like, that's common, though. Yeah, but it's the connection. Because, like, even in, cause, cause, like, even in Skyrim, mm-hmm. like, there's a whole revolution, like, a whole civil war going around, and there's a rebellion, and then there's the Imperials. Mm-hmm. They're called the Imperials. That's facts, but you know, this Zack Snyder's associated with... What is associated with Star Wars at some point, so people are going to make But Imperium connection. sounds cool. Imperium does sound cool, yeah. The Imperium. That shit sounds cool. And on top of that, on the teaser trailer, we saw people rocking what looked like lightsabers. That's true. So he's taking a lot of inspiration. You know, we, hey, but fuck it, bro. What if the, what if this shit blows up, bro? I'm gonna be real with I'm you. I'm gonna be real. But it's called Rebel Moon. I don't. I feel like Rebel Moon doesn't sound like like that big movie title. It sounds like it sounds like a movie title. It doesn't sound like the franchise. That's fast. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm gonna be real with you. As high budget. As high budget as this movie looks, because this yeah. movie looks high budget, hella green screen, hella special effects, I'm going to be real with you. It coming out as a Netflix original movie, it's not going to do well. Oh, no, he's not wrong. He's not going to do well. He's not wrong with that. He's not going to do well. Normal. He's not wrong with that statement. I mean. Money-wise, it's not going to do well. I'm not saying it's going to be a bad movie. I'm just saying it's no way it's going to take off the way Hector's predicting. It's not because it's a Netflix original movie. You know, I always wondered how did like when when Netflix has these original movies that are big like Rebel Moon, right? Mm. Obviously, when it comes to like theatrical movies that come out in movie theaters, we know how it if it's like a, a it makes money. Finance, yeah, money. But for Netflix, how is it? How do we know it's a success? Like, oh, that's the thing. this many people watched it day one is like is that how we rate it with success? Well, like, that's kind of it. Kind of it. Kind of it. Kind of ties in with the writer strike. It kind of ties in with what's going on with the writer strike because a lot of now nowadays a lot of shit is coming is premiering on streaming services like Disney Plus and mm-hmm. Netflix and all this shit and the writers and the directors and all these people are not getting paid the royalties that Netflix and Disney Plus are that they're making paying their writers. See, like Mario said, with box office at least the movie's making money through theaters, but when it's streaming services, 
everyone just receives a paycheck. All right, man. Thanks for making the movie, y'all. And then all the money that that movie rev, uh, uh, generates, I don't know, based on streams, based on how popular it is. I don't know how the algorithm works, but yeah. the streaming services keep all that. And people were fed up. And that's why that's another factor as to why they went on strike. So that's why I'm saying money wise, the movie's not going to do well. On top of that, a movie this fucking high scale, bro, high budget, hella, it's a, just a, it's an overall just a big scale movie. No fucking way this movie's coming out on Netflix, bro. This looks really? like a movie that belongs in theaters for as big as it is. Like, production wise and all that, it looks like that other Star Wars esque trailer of the movie of that other movie that we saw the creator that one looks cool that one looks that, cool that one looks and cool. that one is being directed by the guy who directed uh one. star wars rogue the rogue one prequel movie mm-hmm. he made that movie but you see that movie also looks kind of star star wars-esque aesthetic and all that it also uh oh shit it also um it also what's it called it's sci-fi and all that yeah. shit bro but you see, that movie comes out in theaters, and it makes sense because it looks yeah, like it you're belongs right, there. This one should come this out. This one should have come out. This one's cool. Right, but like, I just hate when I see big movies like that being released on, uh, on uh, what's it called, on streaming. It just yeah. feel like it doesn't belong. Javi, you're getting a phone call. You want to take that? Well, me and Javi. Well, well, I'm going to text the person see what's up. If it's an emergency, okay. then. Um, but you want to take the next question? Yeah, so yeah. I'll he pass could, the mic tomorrow. Yeah, he continues now. saying, um, well, either way, it's pretty good right here because mm-hmm. his next question it involves Borderlands and Bioshock. Ooh. He says, um, also, can I get your guys' thought about the two upcoming movie ad- adaptations for of the games Borderlands and Bioshock? Uh, Borderlands, just, bro, the only history I have with Borderlands, bro, is probably like the first two. For me, I thought they were pretty cool. For me, yeah. I is the Borderland the tell not the Telltale like the tall. It, they, didn't they have like a thing where you can pick oh, your yeah, character? Yeah, 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 yeah. That game, me and Thiele, like the Walking Dead. Yeah, me and Thiele played that together because it was co-op, but we we've only ever started it. We never mm. like fucking what's it okay. called? Like I actually went back to finish it, which is a game low key, bro. We can all you, me, and Tilly can play. Really? I think it's on Xbox, and I think I have to look it up. But that's a game us three, we, like you, us three. Oh, and, and speaking of Xbox, remember um, when Danny was over and he brought his PC laptop? We're playing uh, Battlefront yeah. Two. Yeah. It's on the Game Pass. Yeah, I know. And y'all could, we could play it on the PC. I don't know if it's crossplay though. It's on the Game Pass, like Xbox. I get PC can play with Xbox on that game. Oh, shit, you're right. That's what I'm trying to get at. Crossplay. Yeah, you're fucking right. I don't know. But uh, never mind. That, that that that's like my history with uh with Borderlands. Have you uh, have you played it? Just not or Borderlands. Where? Yeah. So Borderlands, right? Yeah. This is, I already could tell this is already getting frustrating. Switching back and forth. I told you. The I told you, cowgirl. Well, cool. I but, mean, unless I connect the mic, but I'm gonna sound no, like. No, the audio sounds bad. Don't do it. <laughs> might as well not right. I, I guess but um so borderlands bro when i uh, a few years ago i bought borderlands 3 Ooh. i actually oh. bought it <laughs> oh, I spit on my dick <laughs> right okay. hector chill bro all right yeah um that's great a few a few uh a few years ago i bought it and the reason i bought it is simply and like i would never been into borderlands but the only reason i bought it was because <laughs> my friend from work at the time Okay. He liked the Borderlands franchise. Yeah, he was yeah, a huge yeah. fan. He's like, you got to get Borderlands three. And I had just got my. PS5. They have a collection where all the games. Yeah, I, think. I heard. Yeah. He was just like, you, you have to get Borderlands three. And I had just gotten my PS5 at the time, so the timeline kind of shows like when I got it. And I was like, fuck it, like I need more games because the only game I had was Mortal Kombat 11, the PS5 port, and Miles Morales. Mm. So like, fuck it, Borderlands. I haven't played the other ones though. It doesn't matter. Just play. I don't give a fuck. All right. I bought it. <laughs> Seventy okay. bucks, bro. I threw down and I played it. And I played it, and I played maybe like ah, playtime, bro. In total, maybe like five hours of playtime. And every time I played it was with my friend. And then afterwards, I never played it again. So I don't know shit about the story. The gameplay looked right. cool. Um, the aesthetic looks cool. And honestly, I'm interested to want to check out the, the rest of the game, like yeah. the, the rest of the franchise. You said there's a collection now. Yeah. I could probably check out the collection. It's called um, Borderlands: The Collection. Yeah, I could probably check it out uh, if I have the time or something. Yeah. But like that is literally I mean, for it to be like a, a f- like adaptation. Like it, it, this same goes for Bioshock. We just got to see what the fuck happens, right? Just because like video game adaptations usually are not that great. Mm. You know, the only ones that has been great was um, the The Last of Us. Yeah, and probably Sonic. You know, that's true. Uh, 
so yeah, I think that's what we that we just gotta wait and see. I mean, uh, I mean, with, with with Bioshock, bro. I looked it up. Netflix is apparently gonna do it. Netflix is gonna do it. Yeah, the Bioshock. And I think it's a film. If I I did a quick search. Oh, a I film. I think it's a film. Set of a show. Okay. But um. Yeah, because I just I just Google. I was like, is Bioshock gonna be a, a movie or a film, or whatever? And I found out that Netflix is gonna. Sorry do if I it. sneeze a lot, guys. I have I have allergies right now. I don't know what the. Yeah, fuck. it's just Netflix confirmed that a film is currently in the works. Oof, okay. Yeah, <laughs> and um, no, I I I think I'll be more hyped for the Bioshock, and I'm, I think I am kind of biased oh, just yeah, because right. I I enjoyed Bioshock. Bioshock. Yeah. I you still got to play them. I played all three games, all the DLCs for them. And I just absolutely love the story. And if they, I mean, if, if it's a direct adaptation, I think people are going to love it too. But you know how that gets, man. Yeah, I know. It's, I feel like they're going to, you know, do like, like oh, it's our version of Bioshock. Like, yeah, no, bitch. Like what they did with Resident Evil. Yeah, man, fuck that. <laughs> but, like, uh, they did so many Resident Evil adaptations, they just could never get it right. I know, man. But um, uh, I, I'm definitely looking forward to the Bioshock one because I love the oh, game. Yeah, man. I'll definitely they're check making it out. A Bio- they're they're making a sequel to another Bioshock game, and I'm just. Really? Yeah, they are. They, yeah, no they, made, they made a studio, I don't know how long ago okay. 2K did, but okay. I'm waiting for that. And so, yeah, that's all That's all he says. Uh, he also wants us just, uh, he comments saying, can't wait for the next episode. Y'all really be my number one for podcast and content. Y'all Thank keep you, man. it real, for real, for real. Thank you. We appreciate that. Yeah, appreciate it, Sheldon. Um, so, yeah, the next thing I want to mention is from Luis, man. Uh, he says, yo, listening to the 500 sub special, bro, tell my boy Mario he's not annoying. The perspective he has being outside the knowledge of Marvel and DC shit makes him more relatable to the common <laughs> yeah. v- viewer slash listener. Uh, it's man. nice to hear what the casuals think of a movie. Ooh. <laughs> there. <Fuck you. laughs> there you what do you got to say about that, Mario? Yeah, Mario, say it, girl. Uh, I mean. He called you a casual. I mean, so that's what I am when it comes to these uh, right. these franchises. So he's not wrong there, but nah, man, I appreciate it because like Amen. it's how I really do feel whenever we review these movies. I'm just like, ah, fuck, and let the experts talk. Yeah, real I quick. Mean, it's, it's true. Um, but yeah, so that he, he says he says that um, another thing is from Ramis. Um, uh, he says, I was a little bit busy, but got a chance to listen to the recent podcast, which, is, which was the 500 sub special. Great job, guys, and thanks for answering my question. Also, I see you guys are into sports. Me too. Huge Bear fans, and I am and I am just highly excited for this season. Mm-hmm. I wonder if you guys talk about sports on a specific channel. Keep up the great work, and can't wait for your next podcast. We're into sports? Well, listen, <laughs> listen right? Because I'm trying to remember if in the 500 sub special... We mentioned something. Mario was talking about sports, maybe. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't. But don't worry. I replied to him saying, yo, bro, like, if you sports, I would say Danny and Mario are the experts. Yeah. Me and Hav, we don't really watch sports. All the max sports that I know would be soccer. That's yeah. max, man. Like, that's mm-hmm. it. Everything else I'm not really into and stuff like that. But um, I'm sorry if that breaks your heart, Ramos. I'm just... I'm a real man. I guess I'm just full on nerd, bro. Bro, I, I gotta. I, I, Ram is. Does he say how like why he brought that up? Like no, bro. He just says okay, I was okay. a little bit busy, but I got a chance to listen to the recent podcast. Cause I know I I'd be bringing Unless, shit up randomly, just like yeah, little I moments, just, like oh I was watching this while, while I was I, listening to that, whatever the fuck. I can't remember if it was. Oh shit! I got it. <laughs> Appreciate it. My bad. I dropped my hat. I can't remember if it was um uh the pod. Or, like, maybe, like, the content you make. Because Mario makes sports content. Yeah. So, like, maybe he saw your shit and was like, yo. Maybe. Ma- that could that, that could be it, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. I'm not knocking y'all for it. I mean, I'm just, I just, I don't know. I just can't get into it, man. No, I, I mean, I think like, it definitely helps. I mean, I didn't play football, but I played basketball right, growing that's up. Fair. There you go. So I, I played can, like, soccer growing up. And, and not I played nine teams. Come on, man. I was that's for, like, you played soccer. And I played soccer, too, growing up. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Really? I, I was in a... I mean, you were in a team? Yes. I was in a... I was in, wait, what do you mean, yes, Hav? You were in soccer, Hav? You were no. in a team? No, I'm I'm talking about Mario. How do you know he was in a He's team? He's told us before. What the he, fuck? Yes. I don't remember. He's soccer t- or basketball? No, soccer. I remember you telling us about soccer. He was in yeah. basketball. That Okay, I can soccer. see that, too. I think he mentioned that, too. I don't he would, remember soccer. he would tell us that he'd be in soccer, and then he's had uh, people in soccer, like his opponents, like make fun of his name yeah. and shit on oh, the field. Yeah, yeah. Mario, why would, they, imagine why would they name you after a plumber? Yeah, yeah, like no, shit bro, like that. No, bro. Literally, I was I was at a game, bro. <laughs> they bitches, bro. I was a kid. I played soccer as a kid. Wait, I don't want to get too much of a tangent. You right. got to get through this. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Go but like, just go if you want to say the story. Like, right, I'll make it quick. I mean, he, he basically just said it. No, but it's funny because like no, it's funny because like. 
I I played soccer when I was a kid. I dropped but it in middle school. So I this motherfucker. That's Jaws. So when I would, whenever Jaws. I would kick the ball, legit, these motherfuckers, there's two kids. Okay. They're saying like, oh my, what's that little fire shell thing that Mario has that you can do? What is what's that? that shit called? What's the fireball. Shit? The what? Fireball. The, the, the little yeah. fireball. Yeah. Oh, the, oh, the red shell. The, yeah, yeah, that, 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 the red shell. Okay. He's like, oh my god, he he launched his red shell. They would literally say that. I'm not even joking to the point where like my my coach yeah. saw that I was like getting annoyed by it, walked to their coach and said like, "Hey, he's getting annoyed, he doesn't appreciate it." And the coach was like, and the coach yelled at those two. <laughs> yeah, Shit, bro. I would have slapped them. Hell no, bro. I but beat, yeah, I would have beat them up. No, the only, yeah, the only sports I played growing up was soccer and and then in high school I did basketball. Oh, middle school and high school That's I did joke, basketball. By the way. I didn't hear my bad. I didn't. No. It's because I said I was I would beat children until they're dead. I, like, <laughs> I, I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. Y'all didn't hear that. No, shit? I didn't hear that. Bro, I said it and I was like, oh my, God. like they, I said it. And you guys didn't say anything, so I thought you guys thought I was for real. I'm like, oh shit. Oh like, no, I didn't hear because I was like talking. You were like, dude, <laughs> I said that. I'm like, because listen, listen, because when Mario when Mario said, oh, the coach uh, yelled at them. Me, I said, oh, I would have slapped them. No reaction. I then I, that. oh, I heard that. No, right. And then I said I would have beat them up. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't said, hear I said, that. I didn't hear no, that. Then I, I said I'll beat them till they're dead. <laughs> yeah, like, I, didn't, I didn't hear that. <laughs> all right. I mean, and there was no reaction. I was like, maybe I should like. They think I'm serious. <laughs> like, they think I'm serious, bro. Oh, that's funny as fuck, bro. I'm laughing. That's funny as fuck. No, guys, that was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> all right, continue. How have you got the headphones? I don't know why you hey, didn't hear that. Hey, but shout out uh, Ramis Ray. Was Ramis who said this? Yeah, Ramis. Shout bro. out Ramis, bro. Hey, man. Yeah, shout out. Just, final preseason game just, just I mean, been and, finished. And yeah, and he says he wants to know if we had a platform where we talk about sports. I told him basically you. like You're yeah. the only one that makes sports content. Yeah, I'm kind of the only one that does. I, I, do, right I do a little bit of everything, but Danny I Danny might get into it. And so, oh, man, man. Oh, maybe you and Danny could double uh, double whammy, double team. Yeah, I knew you are going to make it sus, bro. And this motherfucker. As soon as you said double, I'm like, oh, it's going sus. Y'all could, double, y'all could, y'all could duel each other or something. <laughs> or something, uh, right? Nah. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Go Bears, bro. And uh, Joe has, how fucking, how Javi huh? likes to say it, Joe Sue. I'm pretty sure it's him. Joe Sue? Joe Joe Sue. He's a Chargers fan. Oh, yeah? Yeah, bro. I, was, I messaged him. I was like, Wait, hey, you know, what is motherfucker like, a Chargers uh, fan? What do, you, what do you know about the Charger fans? It charges my phone. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this, fucking how don't know shit bro. what do you mean cowgirl she's a charger is it a wireless charger or a cable no, charger if, what, hey, if, any, of, if any of them were sponsored by Mountain Dew Javi is watching that's <laughs> facts bro Javi's in there I don't know. Uh, but yeah okay so the next the next thing is Sheldon uh, Sheldon M shout out to you Sheldon he says hey guys I have a question for you it's kind of random but I've been thinking for a bit a lot lol I don't know if you remember blockbuster or Hollywood movies oh no I'm, I'm going to assume you do since I think you guys are the same age as me or around there, LOL. But I want to ask what your early... Me- Whoa, should, I think we give our ages already, right? We're like 23. All of us are 23. Yeah. 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 All right. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna assume you guys do... Oh, okay, no, I already read that. Uh, but I want to ask you what your early memories of going to Blockbuster or Hollywood videos. Like what movies or games you remember renting? What was what your experience... What did you experience... Uh, what was your experience of it, if you remember? I was dyslexic. For All it, right, correction. It wasn't Joe Sue. It was Sheldon with the Y. Oh, it was it was Sheldon, Sheldon with, with the Y. I wanted to correct that. My bad. My bad. My bad. Go hop. Nah, Josue. Not you, Josue. 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 Hey, Josue. Hey, Josue. Still an L, bro. He prefers Jamaica over Orchata. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Josue. You were walking L, bro. What'd you say? <laughs> he's a walking, he's a walking L. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, y'all. Swear. Come on, bro. it's fun. Hold on, I might get trash, bro. Shit, bitter, bro. That's but uh, but yeah. So that his early, like, what were our early memories? What things did we rent? Yeah, bro. Like, we grew up at Blockbuster. Oh, we we had Blockbuster, and you said you have Hollywood videos. For us, we had family video. Family video. Yeah. Family video, and like, I mean, I will, I remember going there renting the um, porn section. I've never went in there. Me neither. <laughs> we should have, man. That was a family video. A no, a family video. Family video. Had a porn section. Mm-hmm. We should. Oh, can we say that on YouTube? Porn section? Th- Stop saying it. The, the word <laughs> P. Yeah. The word P. Bro. Yes, bro. I don't think we can. Really, bro? I've be seeing people replace it with corn. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's true, I don't know, bro. Hey, bro. Yeah. Just, just chill on the P's, man. All right? <laughs> Pushing P. Got to P's. Got to be on your P's and Q's. <laughs> Come on. Where's that from, Mario? P's and Q's. Come on. Oh fuck! 
Come I, on, man. You call game. yourself a gangster? He never has. He's never done that, guys. He's never called himself a gangster for the record. No, <laughs> no, no, no I'm, I've never done you that. You bitch. That no, he doesn't know. GTA, it's man. GTA. Which one? GTA 5. Online. P's and Q's to level. To e- I gotta eat P's and Q's to like get your health up. Oh, oh yeah, you're right. Unless P's and Q's is an actual like terminology, that's not GTA Five. It is. It is terminology. It's something that people say. It's like a saying. You gotta I be, you gotta, you gotta be on your. You gotta be. You gotta get your. You be yeah. on your P's and Q's. But I thought. But I. It just I means I like you gotta GTA get on your 5. shit. No, yeah, I know what it means. But I'm just saying, like, I thought it was from GTA Five. No, I I took it from GTA Five, man. But uh. <laughs> But yeah, uh, I'd go there with my dad. We had a limit, only like two movies, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, one game probably. Yeah, yeah. That was my limit. It'd be uh, what movies we'd get? Fuck, bro. Probably like kid movies, man. We would I, never, we would never get the newest movie. Nah, fuck nah. Because you show up and they're all rented. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> or like, and like, I, from what I remember, bro, like as a kid for Blockbuster, I remember I was barely like I was like on the ledge. Of the cashier, like you know the the cashier shit. I was the like counter. the counter, right? I was my my head barely like reached over that. Mm. Like, or sorry, my chin, my chin reached over it. Like for that's for Blockbuster. I remember getting candy too, but for Family Video, I remember being there like when we were like what, I have like thirteen. Much, much younger than that. We really? were in middle school, bro. Yeah, I was like thirteen. Twelve we, and thirteen is middle school. Yeah, like eleven or twelve. Something oh, like that. Oh yeah, like I. would be there and stuff 13. and like it'd, i'd rarely rent stuff though like it'd mostly be our cousin shout out to fabian he'd mostly be renting stuff so we'd go over to his house mm. and like just play the new games or whatever uh mm, but yeah nah, for me the last thing i remember from blackbuster bro was i rent I, I rented out this like this uh hot wheel game okay i forgot you remember those like it's like a racetrack game but you know what i'm talking about it's hot wheel it's in the hot wheel universe so it's like badass okay. and shit and but i've never I, i'm a swear to god bro Y'all might hate me. I've never been to a, inside a family video. No way. You've I've, never been into family video? I've never video? been. I've never been inside. Why? I just. Yeah. No, family video. No, he has Blockbuster. Okay, Blockbuster you have. Yeah. Oh, family video I, he I've been in there, but not family video. Family video was weird because like they put their games and shit in a like a uh, uh, big thick like case. green case. Yeah. Yeah. That was it was so weird. I don't know. It was weird as fuck. Uh, but yeah, bro. Um. That's a, like our earliest memories, man. Like I always, it's only one left. What? One what blockbuster you? left. Oh yeah, until mm-hmm. I buy it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a multimillionaire. I'm gonna be a multimillionaire. Buy out blockbuster. Make it to a streaming service. Um, okay. that's my idea. If if it actually happens, just know you heard it here first. I don't know. Just like with DC Studios. For me, bro, with Family Video, I've rented like a bunch of games from there. That was my way of getting into games and shit. What about GameFly? I never oh, did that remember shit. Remember Gamefly? I thought that was a scam. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I wanted to do that, but my mom was like... Fuck no, fuck. we're not going to pay money. Yeah, it's like, what? For me, bro, I rented a bunch of games on there, especially during the PS3 era. I rented GTA Five when it first came out. Deadass? Because I didn't have the money to buy the game. <laughs> my parents... GTA Five, bro. Dude, and you know how like you oh, had like yeah. the two, the three, or the five-day limit to return mm-hmm. it? I returned that bitch late as hell. Oh, yeah? Because it took a while for me to do everything, to beat the story and all that. He said I re- do everything. I returned it after like seven or eight days. And you know, there's a late fee when you would turn yeah. shit back like mm-hmm. fucked. So I also rented the X Men Origins Wolverine game. X Men Origins. So you know how the you know how there's an X Men or there's an origin movie on Wolverine and it's trash yeah. with the really shitty Deadpool. Mm. They made a video game based on the movie and oh, the wow. and the game that. is actually fire. It's rated M. Okay. And Wolverine is slashing motherfuckers. It's like you're playing Logan. Okay, dude. So it's, that one's cool. It's fire. And then you remember that movie Wanted, where like curving bullets. Dude, and shit? that game is fire. I got that game too. Yeah, that game was. Cool. I got that game and I rented it from Family Video. So a lot of um, times I was renting games from there, bro. Yeah. But I couldn't enjoy them because I had to return them after five days. I think I re- I think I also rented the second Mortal Kombat movie, Annihilation, which that movie is fucking garbage. I'll spare you the details, but that movie is <laughs> fucking trash. And you watched. And I watched it and I lost it. So I had to Damn. go to Family Video and pay money because I lost the disc. Or in other words, my 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 mom had to pay <laughs> money for the movie you know that I Probably I forget. Not, yeah. But she was mad as hell. Of course, bro. <laughs> um. Okay. So okay. Let's get. Let's see. Um. Next thing is from Francis. He just mentions. I don't know if I read this. And no, I don't think so. Because uh, we in the 500 sub special that was our last pod we mm-hmm. mentioned our, like our stats. I remember on Google Podcast we had four. Mm-hmm. Francis says, "Just realize you're on Google Podcast. You got that plus one from me." 
<laughs> okay. I don't know yeah. if it's I don't know if he's one of the four or he just went on there and he, now he's a fifth. But I just want to say shout out to Francis because I've noticed he followed us everywhere. Mm. He's followed all of our accounts, I believe our personals, yeah. which I guess Mario is what just Jazzy mm. at just Jazzy on Instagram. Javi is what Javi is flying right now, and then uh, minus at scene six. So he follows on personals, and he followed like the podcast everywhere, man, on TikTok, even on SoundCloud. I know. I, I saw that. That's I saw. Crazy, on, I went on SoundCloud That's and I awesome. saw a notification. I'm like, what the fuck, Francis, bro? You tripping, man? You wilding? So I just want to shout you out, Francis. And then, um, so the next thing is, I want to shout out uh, another supporter of ours. His name, uh, fuck, I'm trying to get the message real quick, man. His name is Quinn. Shout out to you, Quinn. Um, Quinn, uh, he mentioned he mentions uh, he. I want to shout him out because he says that he's been listening off since the Sonic reviews. Oh, like a week after we dropped it. And that's how long I called BS on him, bro. I was sending him voice messages. I was talking with him and stuff. I called BS. I like our Sonic reviews, bro. That was our fourth episode ever. Okay. And we had no, at least for what I knew, we didn't have any listeners or whatever. No, we had no. But he says he any. found it as some like uh, fake some type fake shit. type shit. Because he says that his friend had a pod. He says something about the Heath or like Heatherins or something Heathers. with an H or whatever. Yeah. And he found ours and he thought it was his friends. And then he clicked on it and he just kept on listening ever since he says. He says he fucks with us and stuff like that. And but I don't know, man. But to me, I'm like, if you've been listening for that long, you never said anything until now. Hey, Quinn, if you listen to right now, bro, I'm calling you bullshit, man. Come on, man. What the <laughs> fuck? I don't believe that. Because, dude, that was our fourth episode. Starting fights with the with the supporters is why. Hey, that was our fourth episode. Hey, hey you should have seen the voice messages, though. They was crazy. Um, it was just Hector being like, you full of shit. No, man. I will beat your kids to death. <laughs> <laughs> On the soccer field. No, no, no. But, like, realistically. Like, I, yeah, we're I'll just... make that yellow card red. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. The yellow card red? I don't get that. You know how you get oh, yellow? Oh, soccer field? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the soccer field. Yeah, man. yeah um... So yeah, that's what he that's what he uh was was saying. We were just talking back and forth. He was just I don't want to say everything just yeah, because yeah. it was a long fucking conversation. But he just uh saying how he really fucks with us. He likes our dynamic that most podcasts say that uh they don't have the same chemistry as us. That we have the chemistry of being boys for so long and like it's true. I mean, Hav, he's my blood cousin, bro. Like he's been there day one. Mario, he's a really good friend of mine. We got We've been close. I mean, we knew each other since middle school. Yeah. But we got close in what? 2017? 2018? Yeah, I think it was like junior year. Something like that, right? Junior year, yeah. So that's when we got close and stuff. So yeah, we definitely do have the chemistry. We're like, we want to we want to keep it real and stuff. He also says that he really fucks with us, that we have like, that we're all pretty balanced in a sense where he says that Hav, he's the knowledge man. Oh, yeah. <sighs> right? That he is, what? Remember what he said? Cause I was there when you when you were having this like the, the, the um, yeah. Met, yeah remember we said about how he's like hey man I was like the know it all when it comes to films but hey man I might be able to challenge him remember I don't think he says oh, oh. I'll explain a bit so like uh, yeah. so so he just says that he fucks with us because Javi he's the knowledge man facts or whatever he says me like I'm the funniest motherfucker I'm just entertaining or whatever mm -hmm. he says you Mario that he that you're like the audience pleaser because like you're the middle ground between. I guess me and Hive or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and I truly think like, hey, I mean, that's kind of true. We all have our like our strengths and, and stuff and we're just boys like kicking it. And a funny thing is, it's like he was saying that he is also a nerd himself and that he knows a lot about these things. And he said uh, <laughs> that he wanted to um, he wanted to no, I, I can't remember. If he said because he said he was making a pot of his own. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then he said he wanted to be on our pod or something. Mm -hmm. I forgot. Uh, oh, no, no, no. So first. So he says all these different things. And I say, yo, bro, just wait till uh, me, me and Hav, we're doing our own superhero pod. Like, that's going to be like nothing, anything like it. Nobody's doing it like the, like us. Right. I told him it's going to be the number one superhero pod. Right. And then he hits me with, hey, man, I support you, bro. But don't say number one. Oh, yeah. He does. He's like, don't say number one. I'm like, what yeah. are you talking about? Because starting September 1st, you're going to be the ops. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> He's like, I'm starting my own pod. And I told him, hey, man, fuck it. You the ops. <laughs> yeah. I said, fuck it, bro. You the ops uh, then. All he's right? a funny ass dude, Quinn. Yeah, he's funny. So I'm like, you the ops then, bitch. What you mean? Right? 
But all seriousness, he said he was going to do a pod that he might get his friends involved or he might mm-hmm. pull a Joe Rogan where, like, he'll bring in guests and stuff. And I told him, like, if he ever, if he wants us to have on as his guest for his pod, that would be down. We just got to figure out how that works. Like, mm-hmm. a, probably, like, a Discord call or some shit. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But, yeah, that's what... Oh, I thought he was just going to fly us out. Dumb man. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny as fuck. That's sus as fuck. But... <laughs> Hey, man. <laughs> I eat that shot, I ain't fl- I ain't fl- and that's funny as hell. <laughs> hey, I ain't flying no man out, bro. Uh, I ain't flying no man out. What if it was out. Batman? Robert Pattinson. He said, hey, Fuck hey, 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 CN6, I absolutely love the podcast. Let me be on it, but you got to fly me out, mate. I'll be like, like, isn't he so English? Like, isn't he English? But you're talking like he Australian. Uh, I'll be like, that's facts. Ignore that. Uh, I'll be like, mate. bitch, you got more money than me. What do you mean fly you out? <laughs> I'm just, He's, like, I'm just like I'm gonna fly you Mexican out, but kid, that man. shit gonna be economy, boy. He's like, never mind. I'm going to your fuck op, you, Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> Spit so much. He spits me through the phone. <laughs> fuck you, Batman. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I don't, I don't want to get too much of the tangent. Uh, um, but yeah, that's uh, that's what was happening, right? And um, he um, was also saying, hey man, like I know a lot of things for myself, man. Just put me on the pod, blah blah blah. Like have me on the pod one day. Uh, Put me on a ten day contract, or ten like day contract, whatever Sorry. type shit, right? And obvi- and truthfully, like, hey man, I t- also obviously all talking aside, say, hey bro, go for it, man. Like, do your thing. We support it, bro. Just like we've been doing it for a long time and stuff. And truthfully, you know, first I want to see, I want to listen, bro. I want to see you grind and shit. And this is nothing personal, you bro. I want to see you grind and actually do shit and stuff if you really want to come on or we'll have you on or something. And I'm not trying to be a dick. It's just because I've had uh, maybe two or three people message us saying that they wanted to join us or whatever, like uh, be on a pod with us. Mm-hmm. And they said that, that they're getting in the same atmosphere as us. And then I told them, like, I'm sorry, like, no, it's just us. You know what I mean? No disrespect. You, you seem cool, but it's just us for now, right? We'll probably have guests later on, right? And so I go back and check on their shit. Guess what? They're not doing what they're doing anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like, I, if you really want to collab with us or something, I got to see that you're actually about it too. Mm. You know, not just like have you on and just be a part of this fear for a week and then you're you're doing something else and you're no longer a part of this. Because I had three people message me like that and they're no longer like a part of this space anymore. So it's like, the mm-hmm. fuck? Like, what was a what was the point of that if that makes sense yeah but yeah bro it's nothing personal bro like uh i want to see you grind bro i want to see you do your shit and then we could go f- um from there and he was and then it got to the point where he says that like oh or i just want to you know like maybe not be in the pot or whatever but like you know i just want to be like a co-worker or some shit whatever and i was telling and uh i just told him in the future if if i ever make enough revenue with whatever i'm doing i'll definitely uh would be down to hire people to work and help out like either research or certain content or whatever. And that's definitely a goal of mine that I want to do is be able to hire people and just make this a bigger thing for, uh, from what it already is right now. Um, but yeah, Quinn, uh, shout out to you, bro. Uh, thank you for the support, bro. You're a real one. Also, another thing I want to mention too, from Quinn is that, man, this man funny as fuck. He sends me a clip, uh, from Mario from his clips he says, um, this is funny. Uh, he says, this is funny. Uh, let, me, let me see. My boy stuck in 2015. Y'all help him. And it's a screenshot of Mario. Like if my boy stuck in 2015. Y'all help him. Cause, uh, his face cam is like fucked up. <laughs> Cause I'm trying to, I'm trying to find right here, man. Uh, cause he tells me, yo, tell Mario, uh, I'm trying to find it, bro. Oh, wait, I want to mention this too, bro. Hey, Quinn, I'm sorry. I'm going to put you on blast right here, bro. Because cause he follows me. Uh, and, like, he was talking. Because I'm like, yo, like, anybody know how Discord boosts work, whatever? I put that on my store. He slid up, and he's like, yo, bro. He was kind of helping me out. And then I'm like, bet, bro. Thanks, for real. He says, shout me on the shout me out on the pod, man. Don't let Hob lame ass do it. <laughs> I forgot about that. What the fuck? Wait. 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 Wait.
the just, fuck did I do? He just says shout. He just says, he just says shout me out in the pod, man. Don't let Hob lay man do it. Like what? <laughs> what are you on about? I don't know. I pl- I, I reply. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm only, I'm always the one shouting out. Like, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> but he's just fucking around, bro. He was roasting me too. He was roasting Mario. He was roasting all of us. What the fuck is what? Okay. I don't know, man. He's funny as fuck, man. Um. But yeah, so then I asked him the typical questions. How did you find us? All these different things. He says, I found you guys with a Sonic review. Quantumania review is probably my favorite. I found y'all some random shit because I was looking at my coworkers pod and ended up clicking on y'all's instead of him. Uh, he says, all in all, y'all dead ass talented and need to keep it up because not many folks cut like y'all's real shit. Uh, and then he sends me this video and he says, by the way, tell Mario to get a new camera and stop streaming on that Nintendo DSi. <laughs> <laughs> he said a DSi. That's funny as fuck. All right. Look, Mario was a cook right now. So Quinn, we. Oh, uh, fuck. All right. Okay, give me your. All right, man, man, man. Go ahead. All right, man. So, in, yeah. Yeah, that's fact. I'll make this quick. We're 44 no, minutes. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for this, one, for this one, I'm actually editing it in the beginning. Yo, skip it. <laughs> All right. You thought it was going to be short. <laughs> you thought these questions weren't going to take long. We're 45 minutes into this, girl. Oh, hell no. <laughs> Look at Hector. Hector's pacing. Hector's standing up, Hector's walking back and forth. Hector's pacing around the room. He's like, nah, frustrated, man. I can't bro. believe this shit. So stupid, bro. <laughs> I'm an idiot. We should have just waited, bro. I thought it was not going to happen quick. But like, dude, even even after the fifth question, I'm like, this is short to you, bro. Like, what do you mean we were gonna knock all this shit out? I mean, but I, I I was just letting is you know. Is 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 Quinn the last guy? Yeah. He's okay, a- I'll make this quick. So basically, bro, no, you, it doesn't you, matter no more. I'm gonna oh. put, I'm gonna put a disclaimer in the video. Yeah. <laughs> Skip to here to get started. Yeah. Okay. It's funny. Do that. All right. So, so uh, Quinn said that shit right, and I was just like, don't ever disrespect me like that ever again. So I so I went in my room, sat in the corner in the dark. Rip the fucking camera. <laughs> I, sat, I, was, I sat in my room in the corner, dark, in my thoughts. He right? really felt like Darth Vader. Yeah, I, I activated my the, the the figurine I have in there. Y'all seen it before, right? And I said I can't let this shit slide. I popped out my phone. I went on Amazon. Okay. And I bought this hive. Ooh. I should don't for those for the listeners. It's a Peter Parker looking ass camera. I bought a <laughs> a Nikon. I forgot what number it was. I think it's like uh fifty six hundred camera boy. I'm waiting for other shit to pop in before I mean come in so I can have it on my streams. Ooh. Wait, you could so, have that as a webcam? Yeah. It would be no, it's not a webcam, it's an actual camera, but But you yeah. can set it up as a yeah. I need to buy a cam link, uh dummy battery, our yeah, our expensive cameras. You can link that up, right? Yeah, bro. And so uh, my clip should look a whole lot better because the, w- the webcam I'm using now. <laughs> it took one guy to bully him For real? to yeah. get a good camera. I mean, to be fair, I did tell. To be fair, I did tell Quinn that like, it, like it was already in the works because like, like I've I've been telling I've, I've been telling Mario, yo, bro, mm-hmm. like yo, shit looking trash. Like man. when he brought it up to me, I'm like, yeah, bro, I know, trust me. Like when I was so, making the clips, bro, trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm just like, damn, I need to find. So yeah, so like even like so it was already in the works before Quinn had said anything. So yeah, I, that's why I told him, yo, bro. Yeah, it's you know, but yeah, Quinn. Uh, if you know, I could pay you ten bucks a month, bro. You could work at HRV, man. Let me know, man. See <laughs> <laughs> yourself hired. Uh, yeah, man. We out here playing Ring Around the Rosie with the mics. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, bro? It's so bad. Uh, but yeah, that's that's everything. All right, and I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna make a disclaimer, man, in the beginning. All right, ready? Three. What two, are we? Where are we at? One. Why are you counting? Forty-seven minutes now. Exactly. That's crazy as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. We, said, we gonna knock it out. Yeah, I'll, I'll figure, it, I'll figure it out, man. Because <laughs> no, yeah, it'll be at the end. We should just <laughs> cancel the pot. <laughs> we just talked. I just, too much. I just thought it was gonna be faster than that. But, um, but yeah, uh, uh, Blue Beetle. Yeah, oh, girl. Go, go ahead. Ah, almost an hour in. Let's talk about Blue Beetle, y'all. Fuck. All right, so um, I guess we should start off with the trailer. Um, how how would when you first saw the trailer? How, what were your first thoughts, reactions? <sighs> Damn, Sorry, Siri's gonna answer for me. Honestly, bro, I mean, I thought the trailer looked cool, but I was worried just because of like how the DC movies have been looking and how they've been for the last few years and shit. So I didn't really know. Um, this movie has absolutely no connection, no involvement, or nothing with James Gunn. Um, so I knew if this movie would flop. A lot of people are gonna go are gonna be quick on the social media. Yeah. 
excuse me, and being like, oh, DC's in shambles. What's James Gun- J- James Gunn doing? <laughs> blah blah blah. And it's like this movie and Aquaman were like a well into production by- before James Gunn and Peter Safran came through. So. Even if the movie had flopped, I'm not going to, like, disregard James Gunn and Peter Safran as co-CEOs. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, based on the trailer, man, like, it looked cool, and I was excited. The most my, the most of my knowledge with Blue Beetle, bro, that I know, Jaime Reyes' version of, of Blue Beetle is from what I know in Injustice 2, the video game. And that's the only thing I know him from. Well, no, if we're going to be honest, man, Blue Beetle is, like, a B-list C character, man. Yeah. He's yeah. not he's not very known, like, at all mm-hmm. and stuff. So, I guess it is pretty cool to uh, finally get him. I mean, obviously, he was in the animated shows, the DC animated shows. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm saying, either you know him through there or you know him through uh, the, what Javi said. But like, rarely people would know them, mm-hmm. like, out of, you know, I mean, out of the blue and stuff. And you know, uh, I guess for me, uh, oh, sorry, were you done, Javi? Yeah, yeah. Uh, with me when I saw the trailer, I thought it was cool too. I just had my suspicions as well. Same reasons like you gave Hop. I'm like, ah, we'll see. And technically, this is the start of the new DCU. Technically, un- un- uh, unofficially. Yeah, I'm pretty this sure James movie, Gunn. This movie was, it, it 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 began filming pre-production, all of it. Like this movie legit started. Yeah. You know, as a DC EU movie, because it, yeah. it was just supposed to take place in the Snyderverse. Then James Gunn came into the picture, or Discovery, I should say, came into the picture, made some changes, decided to reboot the timeline, and because chronologically, Blue Beetle comes out after the Flash movie. That movie just be, now kind of fits in into the new universe. Yeah. Originally, it was supposed to, it wasn't supposed to be that way. And then when you go see the movie, it makes sense because even in the trailer, they name drop Batman and Superman, and so then you know that these characters are established, which kind of goes to show that this movie was not made from the start as the in as the official first entry of the new DC timeline after the Flashpoint yeah. incident. So this movie, technically speaking. After because it comes out, it came out after the Flash movie. Yeah, this is technically the first DC Studios movie uh, in the new timeline. Technically, yeah, it is. Even though James Gunn was like, "No, it's Superman Legacy," but he just means like that's the first big movie to come out that he's going to be attached to. That's what he was referring to. But technically, because Blue Beetle is so fresh and it's so new and it's so disconnected from anything else, because there's no crossover. It's not like we see Ben Affleck Batman or nothing like that. Yeah. It's so disconnected that it just kind of, it's kind of like the Shazam movies. It, mm-hmm. it fits perfectly into the new DC universe that James Gunn and Peter Saffron are working on. Yeah. So it's on a technicality that this is the first. That's what James Gunn said. Mm-hmm. But yeah. the first official one that was planned, because it was kind of unplanned, Yeah. is Superman Legacy, which we'll be getting who knows because his writer strikes fucking yeah, everything know, up man. bro we don't but yeah out. this is technically uh, the first entry of the fir- of the new DC universe but I'm gonna be honest with you even with that knowledge in mind I wasn't going into it hype like oh shit this is the because it was still made with the DC EU yeah kind of like with the with the inspiration behind it what, what do you think that maybe James Gunn uh, saw the film and was like you know what this is actually pretty good fuck it and like we're gonna I'm gonna have this as like the like the where I'm going to have this part of my DCU. So technically, it is a DCU. I don't think he saw it and thought it was good. Uh-huh. I think he saw how disconnected it was. He's like, you know what? And he it. said, this could fit into my shit. Like, because mm-hmm. he saw the Shazam movies and he's like, no one, you know what I mean? Like, nothing shows up. So he wanted to fit it in. But like, then we got Shazam 2 and Wonder Woman showed her face. And I thought that bitch was not DC no more. Bro, speaking of DC, you want to, do you want to, this, this is completely random. Okay. Maybe like a week ago, I had a dream, right? <laughs> it's rare when I have a dream. I'm scared. I had a dream, bro, that John Cena died. What the <laughs> fuck? No, listen, listen. No, it gets even more fun. I really can't see him now. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, this is what really fucked up, right? <laughs> okay. I went to, I, I, I dreamt that John Cena died. Okay. Right? Okay. And I was pissed as fuck <laughs> because of Peacemaker. Oh my god! <laughs> I was bummed out, bro. I remember just being pissed as fuck. No Dude, peacemaker. Are you serious, bro? What the fuck? What about peacemaker, man? <laughs> what the That's fuck? Funny. <laughs> I'm serious. I swear to God, it was the craziest shit. And it just reminded me now that we're talking about the DC, the DCU. And I woke up like I'm like, oh my god! I checked my phone, 
and I make sure I'm like, no, nah, he good. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, we're so, you so, woke it's up a dream. at 3 a.m. Like, it's just hey, a dream. Man. No joke. I did it. Like I was like, I woke up like forcefully. It was so weird. It was like forcefully. So I was like, my eyes were still closed. I was still tired as fuck. Uh, and I was like forcefully getting my phone and looking it up. And then I was good. And I was like, oh, that's just a dream. <laughs> and I went back to sleep. That's funny as fuck. Dude, it was the weirdest thing ever, man. I don't know what that says about my character. <laughs> like, am I a shit person that I only cared? Like, I only cared. Like, I only cared because because uh, of Peacemaker. Like, who will who will play Peacemaker now? Like, but yeah, dude, it was so random. It was so weird. I just had to bring that up. That is weird. Yeah, bro. I don't know. All right, uh, not R.I.P. I was about to say R.I.P. John Cena. <laughs> uh, no, man. Shout out John Cena, man. That's funny. Come on, man. I love you, man. Peacemaker. But I mean, that's really it. Yeah. That's that's really all the all the info that yeah. I had before going into the movie. I was excited to see it because I knew pre knowledge that this was a Mexican, yeah, uh, culture superhero, and that's his which, whole thing in the comics and stuff. So which we don't get that a lot. We don't get that a lot. The closest thing to Mexican representation that we had in the superhero movies is De Noche Huerta playing Namor in Aquaman, oh, okay. Aquaman, and Black Panther two. And even, but even then, that wasn't he really was comic the, accurate because <clears throat> uh, Namor wasn't uh, his Mexican or Hispanic. yes, that is true. And on top of that, he was also the villain. Yeah, he was the antagonist. So this is the first one we get the good guy. In, in front row center. And on top of that, I was really excited for the movie when I heard who they casted as Blue Beetle. Who they casted yeah. as uh, Jaime Reyes. And they got... The thing is, bro, I don't know how to pronounce his name. His first name is X-O-L-O. And I think... X-O-L-O. And I think he pronounces it as Cholo. Cholo. Cholo Maridueña. That's Maridueña. his last name. But okay. I don't know how to pronounce the first name. It's X-O-L... I, I'm, I'm sorry if I mispronounce it, but... So, I'm going to just say Cholo. Like, Cholo Huerta. What the fuck? I took his name and a Namor's name and I combined. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh Cholo Maridueña is the guy that they casted to play Blue Beetle yeah. and I like him. I know him because of Cobra Kai the show. So he's the main character in Cobra Kai and he's a really good actor and I love him in that show. That show's fire. So when I heard he was Blue Beetle, I was like, that's fire casting right there, bro. Know, so yeah, we'll see what happens. Him. Um but like other than that, bro. I didn't know anything else about the movie except the casting and yeah. what was going on with behind the scenes. So I was looking forward to it. My fingers were crossed and I was like, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's pretty much. Yeah, I pretty much feel the same way. Mario, do you want to say your thoughts? I don't think you gave your thoughts yet. I mean, for the trailer, bro, after I, I was looking forward to it because obviously I, I was first introduced to Blue Beetle in the, the Batman Brave and the Bold animated show. And that's how I found out about him. And so I liked him ever since that show. So when it was coming out, I was like, oh, I'm looking forward to it, like, for sure. And then I saw the trailer, and I was kind of just left in worry or not. I wasn't, like, excited. Like, my excitement kind of dropped. Because I don't know why. I, the trailer looked to me, just the trailer, it looked like, I'm like, why does it look, like, low budget to me? Like, it looked cheap and shit. And I was like, oh, watch this not do well, bro. Like, watch it not do well at all financially, I mean. And watch it be, like, a flop, and people are going to make fun of it right and i also knew that that uh this was also going to be the beginning of the james gunn shit right and so i was like well this flops that's gonna that's gonna suck mm -hmm. i'm not gonna lie but uh not to get too deep into non-spoiler but like i did fairly enjoy it well, i mean if we're gonna be honest man uh like it it didn't do well it didn't do too hot in the box office mm -hmm. you know it, it did it didn't make that much money uh uh, gross 25.4 million domestically and 18 million internationally for a global tally of 43 million mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know what was the budget for the film? uh 104 yeah man it did not do well and like even before the movie came out many people were predicting it and you know the whole people bring up the argument of you know superhero fatigue have and i we already discussed we already debunked that mm -hmm. that's not it mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know and I guess just, I guess uh, I guess sorry to cut you off, but I guess the yeah. director. I don't want to get this wrong, but fuck it, I don't care. I think Correct the director. In the <laughs> yeah, I think the director of the Marvels, uh -huh. the Marvels movie, the Captain Marvel movie, Miss Marvel, and the other bitch. Mm. <laughs> the director of that movie came out and said, "Uh, no, there is superhero." Fatigue. Oh yeah, no, there, no, there isn't superhero and fatigue. I, and then I think this bitch even went on to say, no, "Hey, man. it's all good though, because my movie, The Marvels, at least now, and this is the movie I tried to offer something new to the superhero genre." 
So not only is she saying, yes, there is superhero fatigue, but you're saying, no, but don't worry, I'm going to break that with my movie. And then based on these last two trailers, yeah, whatever. Whatever, we'll see, bro. cowgirl. Yeah, whatever. It, uh, there's no such thing. I mean, we, I mean, no. uh, Guardians Fuck of the no. Galaxy proved that. And uh, Across the Spider-Verse. Yeah, and Across the Spider-Verse. Like, it's just got to be good, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, like, even before the movie came out, uh, Blue Beetle was already projected, uh, was already estimated to not make a lot of money and lose money. And and unfortunately, that's what's happening. And that sucks, man. I mean, uh, it's just, I guess not many people, like I said, Blue Beetle's not really a renowned uh, character either way. You know, uh, so many, and also it's DC. Right, many people are not like. If it's not, if it's not James Gunn, if James Gunn's not tied to it, people don't care because they're saying, uh, like, same with thing with Shazam. Shazam did poorly as well. Mm. So their eyes is like, well, okay, there's no if. Okay, since I know the DCU is being rebooted by James Gunn, what's the point of me going out and spending my money to watch these movies mm-hmm. if these don't even matter? Because there's not, it's not part of James Gunn. I think that's what happened. Maybe, you know, and people are just not really interested because of that reason and because i know for a fact superman go go crazy because it's because it it's james gunn technically dcu james gunn himself right not only that it's fucking superman Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah james James and wrote it yeah yeah so that's what's happening right and um so yeah and unfortunately that sucks man like it is what it is DC taking L's man and hopefully the Superman movie with James Gunn uh, picks it back up picks it back up Uh, I'm still holding out for Creature Commandos that's the first that's the first official project that's coming out with hopefully as James Gunn and Peter Saffron like you know involved involved in it that was the first project and that's gonna come out in the beginning of 2024 Hopefully, with this writer strike, yeah. who the fuck knows? But that's what I'm holding out for. If that flops or it's mid, then I'm gonna start getting worried. Like, no, James Gunn let us down. Like, I'm not saying that now because he wasn't even involved in these last few movies. Yeah, but that's the one I'm holding out for. Um, okay, so uh, let's go into um, the movie. Yeah, let's go into movie non spoilers. You don't want to give the rating? Rating? What do you mean? The non spoiler. Do the rating. What we thought? We haven't even done it yet. We haven't even gave. We haven't even gave the non spoiler yet. Oh yeah, you're right, dude. What are you? Are you good, bro? Talking about the trailer for so long, I was like, bro, it's because we're raw. Like we, like we, (laughs) like we like to dissect things. We like to go. We like to really bring value, bro. We're not like we're not like Quinn, bro. We're not the ops. (laughs) Right? We're not the ops. Why you saying ops like we're the ops? We're not the ops. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Quinn, but like, stop. Yeah, I hadn't even started yet. Don't even start. <laughs> it's a wrap. Even though I'm out, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> Look at, uh, what was it? Nick, Nick Fury. Fury. Nick Fury. Even though I'm out. We, we mentioned a lot of those jokes in our uh, Secret Invasion reviews. Yeah. Go watch that, guys. That's where the inside jokes yeah, come Yeah, in. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's another thing. Speaking of inside jokes. Quinn said that he's funny, that we're funny as fuck. That, like, obviously, I'm pretty sure he's joking. He said that he's gonna uh, that he would want to take like he knows all of our inside jokes and he says that he he's gonna take some of our jokes. He's a shit. bitch. <laughs> That's what he was saying. He's a fucking. What That's a what he hoe. says. He goes, he's like, hey man, I'm gonna have to rip you some of your jokes, man. He's Y'all a funny fucking as- hoe. <laughs> what a fucking hoe. <laughs> hey, I think he, I think he's joking, man. He's just joking, man. But if he, hey, if he's not, hey, whatever, man. But no, nah, quit. We're just we're just fucking with you, bro. That's funny. I, it's cause it's cause. You call how a lame ass motherfucker. So like, <laughs> you took that personally. No, but after no, he's a hoe. No, after at the very end, he was saying that he like he was just saying I love y'all. Okay, relax, Hav. He's like I love y'all. Hav is like the knowledge man. All this different shit. You guys are great. I love y'all. Whatever. He's just joking. I feel like Hav, yeah, yeah. maybe gonna take it too seriously. <laughs> like, I'm on math. Like, how are you going? Fucking mic shaking. I took that per. I, I don't fucking know. But yeah, I'm just fucking with you, uh, uh, Quinn. I'm just gonna be fucking out, uh, fucking with Quinn now, like how yeah, I we yeah. do with uh, uh, Luis. Yeah. Remember, uh, shout out to Luis, Luis man. Is the, I, Luis is the Luis is the whenever we do some such shit, he signs up. Yeah. Like, oh, man, fuck you, Quinn. You yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, let, yeah. Let's get into the non. Uh, the non-spoiler okay, yeah, so I, for the non-spoiler part, I I would say this movie. I, I would say I, I saw the Rotten Tomato score before I went into this movie. It was sitting at a 78% for like the f- official critic one. and But the audience score was way higher. It was at 91. Maybe it's different by the time this thing is uploaded. But I would say I I 
agree with what what the scores are, what they are. Mm -hmm. And this film truly does represent those scores. I think, and it's maybe because we're all Hispanic, that I could relate to it more. But not only that, I truly do feel that the family is the highlight of this movie for me. Mm -hmm. I feel like they nailed what it's like to be in a Hispanic house school, household. Mm -hmm. They nailed how, how I would talk to my mom and dad, which is like Spanglish, where like they talk to me in Spanish, but I reply to them in both. I like I could really connect to that. Um, uh, in terms of the fight scenes, I enjoyed them. The CGI, I, even though you could tell some parts were really CGI, it didn't bother me that much. Um, I did have my certain issues with it, but I'm going to save that for... Uh, Are they spoiled? They're spoilers. That's why I'm here for the, the spoiler review. But Can you give like an overall like umbrella of it? Like, uh, I, I just felt like the... CGI wasn't as great? Or like maybe the no, I just felt like the, the villains were... The villains in this in this movie just felt on the weaker side for me. Mm. I'm not gonna say it was as bad as like uh, the teenage villains. Like they're definitely it's definitely better the the, the teenage mutant ninja turtles. I'm sorry, y'all say TMNT whatever the fuck so fast that I fuck it up. TMNT. That TMNT. shit. Yeah, but when I say it though, I feel like I fuck it up. <laughs> you know, what PTSD. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, just to compare like villains, you I say think Ninja the Turtles. Yeah, I'm gonna say that the Ninja Turtles villains. I think that the Blue Beetle Blue Beetle villains are better here than in than in the the Ninja Turtle villains. Interesting. Even though I still think it's still a little bit weak. Like they're, I don't think they're like crazy powerful. You know what I okay. mean? Okay. But um, that yeah. Overall, I think it's a very enjoyable enjoyable film. Uh, what do you think of? For like the non spoiler overview of the film. Um uh, Hector what's the what's it called? Um damn bro, low key Mario just went in a crash course. Yeah. He I, like he said all his shit fast. That's crazy. Is, bro. Yeah. Hey. I wanted to like focus one thing at a time and then focus but he like oh man CGI fights it. It's like damn bro. That's crazy. Hey no let hey let him do let him let him cook. Let, let him, him cook, cook bro. Let him cook. Let him just cook. Let him. Bro, I was on. <laughs> so, okay, so <laughs> what wait, wait. That reminds me. Let him cook, right? So listen. So as you guys know, uh, I was I was working hard with a Discord server. Uh, I believe it's now finished, guys. But I still have maybe I'm gonna just double check and stuff, and then just pay attention to the the Heat Ray Vision podcast Instagram. Check out my personal uh, Instagram. I'm gonna upload when the Discord is live. I've been working really hard on it, like a lot of fucking research from scratch. I had nobody helping me. It was it was tough, right? So now that I, now that I was on Discord, I was exploring more on Discord, right? I was joining different servers, getting inspiration, and I'm just like, okay, Discord is kind of cool. Okay, I'm, I'm like talking to people and stuff. I'm talking like in the Halo chat, whatever. I'm like, okay, it's pretty cool community. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm bringing this up, you're like, okay, what does it have to do with anything? Because let them cook. Discord is weird as fuck, dude. Because I was in the chat just reading what people were saying, and sometimes there's like girls in the chat, right? And then some guys would be like fiending over him whatever right Ugh. and so there was this dude i this was the funniest shit he says hold on y'all let me cook <laughs> he says he says what he the listen no Tom, you, it's not even the funny part he says hey, hold on y'all let me cook right and like because he's talking to a girl he's like hold on y'all let me cook and then people are replying to him let him cook y'all let him cook let him cook right okay and what you about to say bro let him cook right he replies to the girl okay and he just says let uh let me inside of you. <laughs> so let me inside of you. And then people are, dude, the chat's blowing up. Everybody's like, yo, like, what the fuck? You're like, what the fuck's going on? I'm laughing, bro. I'm just there, like, for, like, I'm just there just to lurk. I'm there to, like, get inspiration for my Discord. And I'm reading the chat, and this is what I see. I'm like, what the That's fuck? It's funny as fuck. Dude, it's the craziest shit That's ever, funny. bro. It's the craziest shit ever. What there was the another fuck? message, right, of this person that just randomly says, "Oh, uh, guys, can guys, do you guys know how to fix an issue of an iPhone having a white screen of death?" Mm. And I mean, I'm like, "What the fuck is that?" Right? <laughs> and some dude replies, says, "Damn, bitch, you got a you got an iPhone uh, five or like some bullshit." <laughs> and that made me laugh because the way he said it, "Damn, bitch," like you got. <laughs> He's like, he literally says that, damn bitch, you got an iPhone 5 or some shit. Like, I'm just laughing my ass. I'm like, what funny. the fuck's going on? How do you say, mm, iPhone? What do you say? Wait, what, the, the white screen of death. Yeah, I, remember I remember those days. Like, why, am I, why are you talking like I'm Zorro? I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> you, 
you be looking like one type shit. Like, what the? F- <laughs> hey, hey, and Antonio Banderas, man, he's like, a good looking uh, man. But um, but yeah, how? What is that? White screen of death, bro. Uh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> It's, it's like the red ring of death. It's kind of oh, like that. Like you, your screen goes white. It's unresponsive, and you just can't do shit about it. What the fuck? Yeah. What, how long? And, and those phones, like, what? What does it ha- uh What phones does that mostly happen to? Uh, it happened older like on the, on the older phones, bro. That's why he's a damn bitch. <laughs> <laughs> damn bitch, <laughs> dude. Discord's funny, man. That's, and not gonna lie, it's some weird shit. Yeah. I know. Um, Another thing oh, is that no. some motherfuckers be like role playing. Yeah. Like I saw these people, like um, what's it called? Uh. Role playing as like vampires, what and the these f- motherfuckers be speaking like, "To this day is night, night and dark, my fellow brethren. Will you like to join me in my inquiries of annihilating the planet with my vampiric blood?" Like weird shit, and they reply back and stuff, and I'm like, "I'm just trying to fuck. Like, what's going <laughs> on? Like, I should, <laughs> I should have replied, yo, what we." Like, what well, we, well, y'all sucking? Where's the next? The, where's the? How about y'all use your vampiric sucking abilities on me? <laughs> Mario's shaking his head. <laughs> vampiric orgy. Where are you? <laughs> I'm trying to blah 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 up in that. <laughs> I'm trying to blah 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 up in that. What you mean? What we? <laughs> It's funny. Oh, no, yeah, bro. It's it's crazy. But not gonna lie, there's some people that are cool, just chill, yeah, just talking about just talking about COD. I was in the COD server, people just talking about, you know, the camos and COD. Yeah. But it, dude, I'll be seeing some crazy funny shit, some <laughs> weird shit. Discord is an interesting place, bro. I've never used Discord until like just recently. And yeah, it's pretty it's pretty interesting. But yeah, I went on a tangent. I just wanted to <laughs> That was you, girl. Let them cook. I just that reminded me. It's like what the fuck. <laughs> but yeah, have go ahead, bro. You're on. It's you. Right All right, now. bro. Well, hold on. Oh, you what? keep the mic, bro. Yeah, I just keep the mic. But what's it called? Um, let's break it down one by one because I feel like Mario went on a on a speed run right there. He sped run. Mario gave review. a one minute review, bro. He said, "You know what? Here's, it. here's it all. Here, here's, here's my here's one, all in, of it. one minute review. Just uh, like how I laugh. All right, bro. Well, here, let me think about it." Well, the first thing we should no, talk it's about. No, it's not that bad, though. It's not that bad. I'm just, it's funny how you broke it all down like hella fast. I wasn't expecting him to speed run. I thought Arado was here for a second. I feel like, <laughs> fucking Arado. I feel, like I, I feel like I missed so much, though, giving like that, what I said. I feel like I missed like a lot. Oh, well, let's, well, let's see. Yeah. Right, here, so, uh, l- yeah. one, uh, l- let's focus one thing at a time. The first yeah. thing, the obvious thing, what, 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 did, what did we think about Blue Beetle? Yeah. The actor, and the portrayal, and his represent and his uh, portrayal in the movie. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Hector? Uh, Man, uh, well, I should ask: Do you have yeah. any pre like knowledge about him, like how he's supposed to be? Blue like, Beetle, yeah, he's kind of similar to, um, he, he like he, I wouldn't want to say like Spider Man, but he is uh more like the quipster kind of guy. He do he does say those kind of uh, funny lines. He doesn't take every, things too seriously. <clears throat> he knows how to have fun and stuff. And so, to me, I kind of saw that with Blue Beetle. I'm like, all right, like. He knows how to have fun, especially even the actor himself. I don't know. I've never seen him acting. I know you have and stuff. Um, but from what I've seen here, I thought his performance was really great, man. Mm-hmm. Like I thought like his scenes where he had to be serious, emotional, even like funny. I thought everything was was there. And like him being Blue Beetle as a character, yes, I was skeptical. I was like, okay, like I got to see what happened, what happens. Uh, overall, I really did like his character, like. I really did like his character a lot. Like, I like his personality was likable. Like, I don't think there was anything that maybe th- that made me um, not like him. not like him. It's something that threw me off. Mm-hmm. I truly think we got a good Blue Beetle here, and I think mm-hmm. and I truly believe that this is a character that can definitely interact with Superman and every other hero, mm-hmm. and it'd be like cool to see. For me, bro. Sense. For me, I absolutely agree. Yeah, I think um, again. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I'm gonna just say it's Cholo. 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 So Marilu- Holo? Huh? What? Holo. I don't know. It starts with an X. It starts with an X. Or Zolo? Maybe with a Z. It starts with uh, like. Do you think so? Z. Yeah, because like some Mexican names with an X, it has with like a. You replace it. We're, no, because because sometimes with an X, it's with a. Z, uh, they pronounce it with a Z or a H, right, Mario? Like for example, like X I M E N A, like Jimena. I think so. Yeah. Like like the word Jimena, mm. but it'd be like an X. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, 
Like Cholo I said, sounds weird. Like I said, bro, I'm not too but he, sure. He says he calls himself Cholo. I don't know. That's the thing. I've never heard him oh. his name pronounced. Oh, okay, That's okay. why I don't know how to pronounce it. Okay. But anyways, that actor, I yep. think he did a really good job playing Blue yeah, Beetle. Man. Like I said, I have previous. I have previous experience with him in Cobra. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, <laughs> yo, pause. I, got, I, I had previous experience with him in bed. Yo, <laughs> hey, yo, chill, chill, chill. <laughs> chill, keep it on the down low. Like what you experience with him? I like when you said when I had previous experience, I didn't take it sus until Hector said he's like, oh wait, yeah, you're right. That shit is sus. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Luis signed off. That's ironic Luis. considering Mario's the fruity one, girl. And, and actually, oh, that's another thing I reminded is uh is Quinn also acknowledges that too. Oh, that he's yeah. fruity. That Mario's the fruity one. Yeah, yeah, man. Like, fruity. I mean, everybody in the everybody <laughs> realizes that. Hey, that's that's Mario. That's his thing. He's the audience pleaser, and he's also the fruity one. <laughs> Hey, it is what it is. Hey, it is what it is. Hey, man, oh I truly God. do be pleasing the audience. Hey, yo, all right, bro. <laughs> all right, man. <laughs> nah, man. I'm going to take them all on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to suck them all. <laughs> that's what, that's. <laughs> let me find out, let me find out Mario was in that vampire roleplay Discord, girl. Yeah, he probably was. He probably bro. was. He probably girl. was. Y'all try to suck. Yeah, oh, this, bro, no, that shit was wild, bro. I'm not gonna Fuck lie, that, bro. But not gonna lie, bro. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> you did it. No, 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 bro. No. I'm the one that made the. I would have been Ben Helsing. <laughs> hey, I would have been Ben Helsing. <laughs> All right, yeah. Fuck. No, no, some real shit. Okay. One of one of the pe- one of the persons doing that. I'm not gonna lie. They're really good at it. <laughs> like, like the words, like the words they use, like it sounds like it could be some shit in Dragon Age Inquisition or Skyrim. Like like the the, the the way they put the words together, like these words I never heard before, it sounds like that shit. Like I was kind of impressed, even though it's kind of weird to me. I was impressed. I'm like, wow, this this guy knows his words. Like he was like, shit, I might I might take that next time. I'm trying to impress him. You know what's funny too, <laughs> is like his name is I am a real vampire, <laughs> and his and his profile picture was like one of those stock images you find on Google of just a real person with a vampire, and he's like this. Oh, his, his hell face nah. white with the you know yeah just a generic stock picture i'm like what the fuck but hey his words man were mesmerizing <laughs> they, they left an impact on you uh, hey i might consider uh joining <laughs> as van helsen what would what would your vampire name be uh van helsen bro van helsen no if i was a vampire what would my name be yeah fuck edward Edward from Twilight. <laughs> That's my Batman. Yeah. Yeah. I don't fucking know, bro. With my vampire. Why? We, I'm assuming you have a joke. What is it? No, nah, I, I, I was just asking. Oh, I'm yeah. trying to think, man. Usually, I, I thought you. I thought you were gonna say, "Oh, my vampire name would be blah blah blah." <laughs> Slobber my. <nah>. Yeah. <laughs> Suck this. <laughs> Suck on this. No fangs. Tis the no night. No fangs. <laughs> Tis the night you suck it. <laughs> Tis the night. Um, okay, uh, all right, all right. Go uh, back yeah, to yeah. your. Uh, what, what did you ask? Was it on me? It was on you. I thought. No, I was on you. It was on you, but you took the mic away from him. <clears throat> all right. Yes, so we're back. I was gonna say um, that I think the actor, yeah, did a really good job portraying Blue Beetle, mm-hmm. and I think he has the potential. I agree with you when you said that uh, that he has the potential of coming back to do future installments, mm-hmm. and I definitely want to see more of this character, especially the actor portraying him, mm-hmm. to come back in future installments. I want to see a franchise with this. I want to see sequels. I want to see him interact with the Justice League. I think that would be really cool. Maybe a young Justice. That'd be cool. That yeah. would be cool, but I want to see him more, bro, because I, fe- I think that they did a really good job portraying Blue Beetle. Yeah. And especially the actor did a really good job, because in Cobra Kai, like, he's had the acting chops to be the heart and be the soul of a show, of, yeah. a, of, a, of a movie. He knows how to deliver the lines with in a way that's believable. So, like, and he's only 22. The oh, wow. Is he age. actually? The actor Because I know he said that in the movie. But so he, like, okay, he actually so is, bro. Okay, so he's 22 as Blue Beetle in the movie and in real life. And in real life, bro. Wow, he's like you're younger than us, bro. Yeah, bro. Making moves. Congrats, and, bro. <clears throat> and he's really good. Like, like I mean, even even in, at that age, like he hasn't even been acting for that long, but like he's oh, and he, got the acting chops uh, already. I sorry to cut you off, but let's mention that he's a rapper. That too. Right, Harvey? He's a rapper. Uh, yeah, do we know his rap name? I have no idea. Is it just his name? I think it's just his name. Yeah, guys, apparently he's a rapper. He decided to become a rapper during this Blue Beetle shit going on or something. Know, Maybe he was a rapper where... before. <laughs> we listened to some of his music. Go check it out. I mean, it's not my cup of tea, but hey. Represent La Raza, bro. Fuck it, man. For <laughs> hey, man, he's doing big things for us, man. That's facts. 
um, but, um, the next thing, um, the next big thing that this movie focuses on, and I want to get your thoughts on. Oh, it, Oh, before we move on, should we on? continue with? Uh, I want to. I want to say real quickly, I really like everyone else too, like the actors. Oh, that they all did a well, good job, especially George Lopez. Well, I was gonna make him his own segment, but we can get oh, into sorry, George Lopez. Bro. No, you're I, good. I, it's because we were. I thought we were on the topic of like the characters and like the actors. Yeah, because uh, everyone else like. I really enjoyed the parents in this film, the grandma. Like, I, I really liked everyone. The everyone sister. was very likable. And like I said, especially George Lopez. And I guess, what, do you want to go with that real sure, quick? Sure, yeah. George like, Lopez? Well, I, I, thought, I thought everyone did a good job. But for me, the standout was George Lopez, easily. Yeah. And maybe I'm You're biased. Right. Maybe, I'm, maybe I have a soft spot because I grew up watching the original George Lopez yeah. show, man. <laughs> the one where, like, the... Flow... Yeah, right. yeah, 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 and they're jumping on the trampoline right. and shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That show is yeah. still good, bro. I actually, I'm actually, I'm actually, uh, I actually recently started binging that show, mm-hmm. um, just for fun, uh, and it still holds up. The jokes and everything is still funny, and the fact that I'm going, that I'm coming off watching that show and then watching him on the big screen, bro, like he still got it. Yeah, he's still funny. He's still the com- a comedic veteran, and he knows how to deliver the lines funny and stuff, bro. Like, I would love to see more of uncle rudy which is the character he yeah. plays i want to see him more in more stuff um, and if we ever see blue beetle in the future cross over <laughs> oh, uh in a big ensemble team like young justice yeah. i would like to see george lopez come along for the ride not necessarily yeah. there in battle but like as someone who joins him with the with the rest of the yeah. young justice like i need to see george with, more of george lopez in the dc you know i was also thinking bro is with george lopez right so he's a comedic right in this movie even though there were some comedic moments with other characters, characters. that but were really was, well but he was the standout he was easily the standout right and i and i just and it just hit me yeah is that this is what uh the black adam guy what this is what they um how do i say this remember that comedic character in black adam I forgot his. Uh, I forgot be more his specific. Name. The, the big dude? Yeah, the big dude. He was like the one that he was supposed to be the oh, comedic character. That motherfucker. I forgot about that. Yeah, I truly. I I thought about it. I'm like, dude, that's what they try to do. That's what they wanted. They wanted to do what George <laughs> Lopez did, and yeah. apparently, obviously, didn't really work out with him. It was more so like, okay, like it was like whatever. It's eye rolling. Exactly. And but I think what, I think a big part of what played into that is that yeah. maybe they just didn't grab the right actor who knew how to deliver the lines in a yeah. comedic way. Since George Lopez has been doing stand up comedy since like the nineties and he's a comic he's a comedic veteran, yeah. he would know how to deliver the lines in a way that would be funny and stuff. He's got the comedic timing yeah, down, man. the he's jokes. A very likable character. Everything, bro. So I feel like maybe where they fucked him up in uh in Black Adam, where they where they got where uh, what fucked it up was that maybe the actor just wasn't casted right. Right. They should have sought out characters who had good comedic timing, who had the the charisma and the energy to pull off a character like that. Yeah, I mean there were some moments in Black Adam that were funny that I liked. Right. But yeah, uh, I agree, man. I think I truly think George Lopez like knocked it out of the park. He mm-hmm. was he mm-hmm. was a standout. Yeah. In here, every time he was on a screen, it was not. Um, it was never eye rolling. It no. was more so you were excited to see mm-hmm. him mm-hmm. and stuff. You were excited to see what he what he was going to do next, what mm-hmm. he was going to say next, and yeah, I th- I thought that's how. Um, now that I think about it, I think that's how I was throughout the movie, man. I was like really invested, and just really quickly before we move on to the topic, um, this movie felt pretty long. You know, I, I don't. Did we look up the Mario? Do we know the runtime, bro? He's about to look it up right now. Yeah, it, if it seemed like two hours, it felt like it. Right, it felt it like two felt hours. Like it. it did feel like it. You know right? what I mean? So I was wondering, like, dang, how long was this movie? And I guess that uh, I guess that transitions well to the next topic that I two wanted to talk uh, about. It's two hours and seven minutes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was two hours, bro. Yeah. Okay. It was. I had sense. a feeling. I'm down with you. It felt long for y'all. It didn't feel long for me. Really? I was about to say I didn't feel the runtime at all in this film. That's crazy. Like to me, if, if I I, I, for me, <laughs> I, it really just felt like an, another hour and a half movie. Damn. Okay, really? It went by quick. I was That's like, That's surprising. Like Shrek? What do you mean Shrek? Like, like Shrek, is Shrek is 90 minutes. 90 minutes? All of them? Yes, bro. All, oh, shit. All of for them real? Are. Yeah. I did not know that. At, at, at most, an hour 40, 45, but it never crosses cool. the two hour it's mark. So crazy that we, it's so crazy that we think an hour 30 is like short now. Yeah, yeah. I know. Ain't that, isn't that crazy? That's facts. How cinema has changed. Like that? That's well, I mean, there was always long movies before, but like, that's, that's a Marvel thing. yeah, now now it's more prominent. You know, it's we're Marvel. really you think it's Marvel? Think it's Mar- every, isn't every Marvel more so, mo- more so, all spectacle, big big budget movies have been. That's what I say because like Once Upon a Time, and that was a long. Well, movie. then again, Quentin Tarantino movies yeah, have always been have always oh, been long. Okay. 
But yeah, I just I think in general, it's just like there's a lot been uh, more longer movies. Yeah. Okay. So. Know? Yeah. You mentioned the runtime. I guess yes. that transitions into the next topic, okay. and that is the runtime. Yeah. More specifically, the pacing. Mm. I felt this movie. 80% of the time had really good pacing. Yeah. Though I did feel that there were some scenes that kind of drag. Okay. And I guess this also transitions to the next topic, and that is that some of the scenes where I felt like it was kind of dragging, where I was didn't really feel like, where I felt like the pacing was like, okay, cool, cool, this is cool, this feels like a cool, breezy, 25 miles per hour, and then we are immediately halted, and now I'm going three miles per hour, where the pacing just feels like a sudden stop. Yeah. Where all the scenes that involved the villain of the movie, who's played by Susan Sarandon, Sarandon or Sarandon, one of the two, okay. that bitch, or the love interest of Blue Beetle, which is Jenny Cord. Mm-hmm. I felt like a lot of the scenes that involved either of those characters is what brought the pacing down. And linking that also links to where I believe that maybe the two weakest things about this movie were the villain, the bitch, the old chick who's going after the scarab, yeah. and the love interest. Though the love interest later on, I guess I kind of grew to kind of grew closer to her but for the majority of the movie i wasn't all that attached to her yeah i agree with you bro and i think that's why i felt the two hours that's another that's why i felt it too so i'm surprised mario was like i didn't feel it yeah what about you mario there were scenes that like what do you gotta say i felt like i felt like there were scenes that like where i like i I felt like the pacing just like was kind of going and then i felt like a sudden stop like it was like if like someone hit the emergency brakes and i'm just like damn bro this feels like it's dragging now like can we pick it up bro like i was having fun for a second ago i don't know personally that's just me what do you think mario Nah, for me i i agree with the uh, the old lady the villain the like, villain like with her i just i got it goes back to her. i was like dude i just think like the villains are kind of weaker where like i just like all right i don't want to spend too much time on you because i don't really care about you like I, you've tried to make me do it but I, like i just don't care and you know why right does everyone in this room why she's not important, important why she, well no like why she's not a standout villain I, well, I, I I'm pretty sure my reasoning is probably gonna be different from yours, but me the way I look at it is like, oh, she's just an origin villain. You know what I mean? A what? An origin like this is a, an origin story for Blue Beetle. You know, his, his beginning. Oh, a villain like the, he's the a first. villain like <clears throat> a villain you give to a hero for the sake of an origin story. Yeah. yeah. That, okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. It's probably different from yours. So yeah, I could I could see that, yeah. but I was gonna take it. I was gonna. I mean. My reason for why I think this villain didn't stand out is technically Mario's reason, but deeper than that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I was going to take it a step further and say that, yeah, I, I understand what he means. We're like, oh, it's an origin story villain. Like, they don't stand out. But, like, a lot of them do. And a lot of them is because there's backstory to them. This bitch oh, had no backstory. That's true. Her only thing was that she has the same last name as the company. So the so the ownership was granted to her. And she's like, I want to just rule the world. Let's no, use I, this, I thought she did. Th- let's say use that. the let's use the scarab to make a She's to make the, armies and ma- weapons of. She wanted to make Cord Industries, basically Stark Industries, yeah. before uh, Iron Man became Iron Man. Yeah. When they were I, when they were making weapons of mass destruction for the army and shit. That's what they. That's what she wanted to do. No, I thought they did explain it. I thought she was the the sister of the pre like there was the original creator, the grandfather, whatever, and then the girlfriend's dad. In the movie, it explains how she gained ownership, but that that's not really enough. That's what I'm saying. Like backstory it's weak. for yeah. her, like because that's thank the you. Sister. Say that's it, no, sister. give him the mic. Give him the mic. Say it again. That was the word I was gonna use. Like she was just power hungry. Thank yeah. you. That's the that's that was, all that, that villain was. was. It exactly. was a typical like power hungry villain who wants to rule the world <laughs> and have a bunch of. I don't know. It doesn't. No. I thought it was. But that's here's the thing, the Mario. Point. But it's, it's, uh, that's wait, not the. What he's not saying the, it's not just. A, it's not enough. Exactly. It's not enough for exactly. us to really. Yeah, I said she's weak. That's true. He did say that. No, I know, I know. But what I'm saying is like, even if the story, even if the movie did, like her give reasoning us, was just uh, being power hungry. Like she that's all more. that it was, and it's not enough. I mean, because I've seen villains like that, and there's no layers to it. Yeah. You could like. Uh, some of the greatest villains put on screen had reasons behind it, That's right? True. Like Thanos, right? He wanted to fix the universe, pop- overpopulation. Um, what's it called? The Riddler and the Batman. Like he felt I mean, like he was wronged by society, and he wanted to expose the the elites, the big right. people who were who were uh, corrupting Gotham and shit. Like, let, let me ahead. ask you. Let me ask you this, half, right? Because we said we we said that with with this um, with this woman, right? Yeah. Why don't we say the same thing uh, for? Uh, Fuck! I just, I'm having a brain fart, bro. What's his name? The villain from uh, Iron Man, first Iron Man. Obadiah, Obadiah Stane. Oh, Obadiah Stane. He, he was just, you know, power hungry as well, right? 
Yes, but I feel like in that movie, they focused a lot more of him like having a relationship with Tony. So you kind of grow to okay, trust yeah, him. Yeah, and, like, and there was that twist, that betrayal. He, that betrayal where he turns into a villain. Yeah, you're right. On top of that, you also get the hints, yeah. the little pieces and hints like of dialogue where you have to pay attention. You realize that like his whole thing is he wants the that he wants to keep making money and he wants to have ownership and like he wanted to basically own Stark Industries and then you find out that he hired the 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 Seven Rings to um to to go after Tony and all that shit like. I feel like there was still more backstory to him. Yeah, even though like he was, I guess essentially he was power hungry and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I do know what you mean that there was a bit uh, more depth into it because because he was um, best friends with Tony Stark's uh, father, mm -hmm. right? And obviously there's this betrayal that happens, right? With here in Blue Beetle, and that's another thing too is that I feel like what makes him stand out was that he is that Obadiah Stane had a personal connection to the main character. Yes, this bitch had no connection whatsoever with Blue Beetle. No, he's just some chick that he comes across. He just he oh just, yes, yes, he just yes, happens yes, to yes. get involved in this situation yes. because he took the scarab and the scarab merged with him. Yeah, and like I think, and also the betrayal thing, right? It'll go back to it. Like I thought that was. That kind of like adds to it, and because on top of that, here in Blue Beetle, right up front, I don't like you, bitch. To like that one girl, to to Jenny, and to um obviously like what you said too with Blue Beetle, like there's no personal connection. It's just yeah. like, hey, that yeah. belongs to me. Mm -hmm. Like you know what I mean? The so typical I, I guess like so. it belongs to me. Typical At least villain. it wasn't um uh sorry to cut you off. Bob. At least it wasn't uh you took everything from me. Yeah, that bitch. And I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, from like, Quantum Mania. Like the typical things that we yeah, see. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. At least yeah. it wasn't that. Another I guess. thing I feel like plays a big part, bro, is that with Obadiah, Obadiah Stane, um, Jeff Bridges does a really good job in his acting in his portrayal. He is just a really good actor, and he definitely flexes his acting skills as yeah. the in the role of Obadiah Stane. And I feel like this girl, Susan Sarandon, or Sarandon, I forgot her last name. Her playing as whatever her fucking name was, I forgot her fucking name. Um, her playing the villain just kind of felt like a generic villain. It just felt like it feels like uh, someone who, like, you know, the director goes action and then, like, she just kind of puts on a half assed performance because she knows she doesn't have to give it her all. She knows this movie's not going to be nominated for any Oscars, so she doesn't have to give the performance of her life. <laughs> what the you know what I mean? You, you cooking her, bro. That's funny as fuck. It's just, no, because, no, 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 because it's true. <laughs> You could tell by her performance that she doesn't give a fuck. It feels like uh, it feels like when the camera. You know it's funny he says this, but like, what if actually she does? Give no, a fuck? fuck that. Hell no. <laughs> then she's I trash. Know. As simple as that. Oh, but it feels funny. like she's on cruise control. It's not like she's like, giving it her all in yeah. the acting. That's another thing too. Is like she just felt generic and boring, and yeah. she was delivering all her villain lines in a, a typical generic way. Mm -hmm. There was no weight to it. Whereas Jeff Bridges did in as in, in the first Iron Man movie. That's another thing. So I feel like some of the weak parts of this movie was the villain because of how generic and just fucking boring she was. And at times, the love interest. I feel like there were some scenes, and there's one scene in particular that we can talk about in the spoiler section, yeah. where the movie forcefully tries to get the audience to connect with her because you kind of um, get an insight in her backstory. But that whole conversation just kind of felt like a drag. And I don't like when movies, especially superhero movies, have to insert a scene that ha that essentially just feels like we're, we're forced to try to connect with a character. Yeah. And there's one scene in particular, we'll talk about it later, but that was the one scene where I just felt like the, the pacing came to a stop and I'm like, all right, I'd no, like, yeah. we can, I, we can I agree, bro. We I think that's why up. I felt the two hours, man. By the end of the movie, I ended up liking her a little more, yeah. but for the, for, for a long, for a big chunk of the movie, I was just kind of like, I don't feel it. Like if, am I really supposed to believe that she's a love interest? Like, for Blue Beetle, I don't really feel attached to her. By right. the end of the movie, I grew, I grew a little more open. Yeah, but she, at times she was just okay. But the villain easily is the weak, is the weakest part of the movie. Yeah, and that sucks because again, what Mario said, it's just like origin movie itis or some bullshit. Yeah. Like it's just origin superhero origin movies just always have some generic villain. Like I just loved when origin villains were cool and there were layers to them, and you don't just. You don't just put them in the movie as an inconvenience for the villain. You're supposed to have you know them have... Go ahead. I, I, was about to say, I just thought of something. Like, a perfect example of an origin villain that has death and actually, like, you really, whoa. Let me find out 
it's what I'm thinking of. And if it is, bro, we're blood. Green Goblin. Thank you. <laughs> Come on, give me yeah. that shit. Give Green that. Goblin, bro. Come on, bro. Green Goblin. Yes, bro. Norman Osborn. Green Goblin from Wido. Spider-Man. Tell me why, bro. Wido, because he is the dad of his best friend. He, yep. They, The first five minutes of the movie, they meet each other. They interact. And then throughout the movie, Norman Osborn is praising and, and, and is taking a liking to Peter Parker more than yeah. his own fucking son, bro. Mm-hmm. In front of Harry, he'll be like, I'm so proud of you. Like, you're raw as fuck. And his son is kind of like, damn, my dad's not bigging me up. What the fuck? So, yeah. like, the movie just establishes his, the you relationship. See his own struggles and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. And then, like, on top of that, we also get an insight into Norman Osborn's thing. You know, Oscorp Industries is struggling with money. You know, they might, the the the, the military, because they provide military equipment for them, um, you know, for them and shit, that they might pull their funding and they might go bankrupt and they might sell the company. So, we actually get an insight to Norman Osborn yep. being like, fuck, like, we can connect to him because we understand he became Green Goblin out of desperation, out of his own struggles. For this bitch, what do we know about her other than she just wanted to be power hungry? Yeah. See that? So that's what I mean where I just wished we would get more origin movies where like we would just try to connect more with the villains and not just have them be there either to be one of two things. I don't like when superhero movies include a villain especially in an origin movie, to be one of two things. A punching bag, a villain just for the bad guy to hit around for a couple fight scenes, or to be an inconvenience, which is like, oh, this bitch just gets in the way sometimes yeah. and like fucks him up. She doesn't, she's not there to fight, maybe maybe sometimes, but he, she's just an inconvenience. She shows up and then it's bad news for the, for the hero. I hate that because it's lazy, bro. Yeah. And it's not enough. And... I can't say, you know, oh, maybe runtime. Maybe they didn't want to make the movie longer. In order to explore her origin, maybe they should have made the movie. No, fuck that. Because Spider-Man with Green Goblin was two hours. This movie was two hours seven. Yeah, man. So they could have done a lot. Mm -hmm. They could have shown a lot. And I think the reason why they didn't show a lot of the villain's origin or why they didn't flesh her out more is because of another reason. Mm -hmm. And this is a great transition to the next category I want to talk about. Even though it bothers me that this villain was kind of generic, and I definitely consider it a flaw in this movie, I think the reason why she wasn't fleshed out was because the director of this movie wanted to flesh something else in this movie out more. And I can appreciate it, but then again, I'm biased. And that is the (laughs) Mexican culture. Yeah. They fleshed out the Mexican culture in this movie. Right. I think this is the first movie that I have ever seen where they get Mexican culture representation right done right since Coco, act. yeah, or like in live action too, bro. Sure, to even and even in, even in live action. Now I understand that there are movies out there that I'm sure do. Coco was fire. Coco was fire, and I'm sure there's been other movies that do Mexican representation right. The reason why it's such a big deal to me is because this is in the superhero genre. Yeah, and a lot of times we don't get a lot of that. So, for this movie, to Show us a scene of 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 Blue Beetle, right? Jaime Reyes and his family chilling in the house, and Vicente Fernandez is playing in the speakers yeah. around the house. <laughs> is nostalgic because right. that's what we connect to. This is why I say that I'm we're biased, like yeah. But like because like that's what we grew up with, and we connected to it. And even the director before the movie came out said this movie is an unapon an unapologetic tribute to the Mexican culture. Yeah. Like he even he even established this movie and, is going to represent La Raza type and, shit. And like the whole, uh, like not they're not spoilers, just like little things, you know, like the grandma using like vaporu, la, la, the grandma, yeah. the grandma like antes that you, uh, before you leave somewhere the the persina, yeah. right? she gives they you, they give the, you the, the blessing, the, the bendición. Yep. Yeah. And um, the whole thing with um. fuck, what was the name? Uh, George Lopez's character, mm-hmm. Rudy, Uncle, Uncle Rudy, uh, with his truck, bro. His truck, bro, his truck, yeah. like, I've seen trucks like that, or, like, <laughs> similar like that, with, with the taillight um, guards and stuff like that, with the with the prints on the windshields, mm-hmm. or, like, even the small um, spoiler on the, on, in the, on the car a bit, mm-hmm. or the, um, what's it called? How, how do I explain this? The, the cage, I guess, the cage-like structure that's behind the, the, the truck, mm-hmm. you know what I'm talking about? Like, mm-hmm. The, whatever the el defensa the, the the defense like on the front like 
that I've seen trucks similar like that. And when I saw that truck, I'm like, dang, that reminds like because my dad used to do stuff, stuff like that with his <laughs> truck. Not not super crazy like what Rudy did, but he would do stuff like that. I mean, I mean, bro, if you look at his Ranger, my dad's truck, right, the black one, yeah, like or even some other trucks that I seen, I'm like, dang, like they really like, you know, uh, they really capture that. And even the whole thing of um, uh, whenever there's a big event going on your family would be there or whatever they start like i guess embarrass you in a way for doing things that's out of ordinary there's a scene where we get where they do uh uh que lo abre, right where the whole thing where they do at mexican parties or whatever and these small different things i've noticed that that might like, do like this is how like the, these people act yeah. and stuff like yeah. that right that's why i say that this movie did a really good yeah, job yeah. with mexican representation so, down to the slang yeah. down to the dialogue down to just the typical things like waving a uh, vapor rub around the nose or just having vicente fernandez music playing in the house little things like that it's yeah. things that like us it's biased because we're mexican and we grew up in that culture that we're like oh yeah that's very much like that yeah but in a sense i also appreciate it that it, it's in a movie so that people who aren't Mexican and aren't with the Mexican culture yeah. can at least be exposed to it, right? And be like, oh, okay, because like, you know, we can watch movies also like, like a whole uh, gap, like the whole Mexican gathering too. Yeah, like they even represented that. Yeah, as well. oh, like, that's what I mean. Yeah, the like whole Mexican whole, yeah, culture. Yeah, and for me, I feel like it's like turning red. Okay, the yeah. movie turning red and how that kind of de- delves into the uh, what was it? Uh, ch- was it Chinese? I think it was Chinese culture. I think it was. I like when movies just get the representation because you get the insight of how the yeah. culture is. And I guess uh, I'm gonna say something, right? I'm gonna say something. Let me let me let me cook real quick. Okay. You know because he's, well, gonna, start, well, he's, he's gonna start talking like a vampire. <laughs> nah. <laughs> no, because like with with well, have and I are saying like. Well, I've said this is a great uh, representation, just like from Coco and everything. Mm-hmm. And truthfully, man, like I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna just be completely honest with you guys. I'm not gonna, you know, um, even they. Okay, just real quickly, they also give in. Uh, talk about like certain struggles, whatever that we have and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know about you know even like uh, papers, right? They talk about border hopping. They yeah. talk about these crazy things. And I know there's one of those things where people might think, oh, that's stereotypical. stereotypical. That's racist or whatever. But, or, or maybe there, there was a joke in there like it's not um, it's not the first time the government put Mexicans behind cages right we're talking about ice and stuff and unfortunately guys like I don't want to get like super touchy and stuff but these are the realities this is just how it is mm-hmm. right and especially like um, it's really cool seeing this because if I'm gonna be honest you don't see a lot of uh, Mexican representation in general bro in the US media when we make up for a lot of you know people and stuff like that you know what i mean uh how many mexican successful youtubers do you see right how many mexican streamers or podcasters do you see how many people do you see in the in the in the a-list movies that are mexicans or whatever how many do how many of them do you see right in the u.s media tiktokers all these sure there are mexicans and stuff but i'm not saying it's not as prominent as when people are making it seem to be. Yeah. And if, and and that's one thing that I just want to make that clear. Like, I think that's w- another thing why I kind of motivated. Because if you guys don't know already, we're Mexican, right? All of us, we're all Mexican. Mm-hmm. So I definitely want to be one of those, I guess, one percenters where we're Mexican have. And we actually made something for ourselves, right? Yeah. We actually did something for ourselves, for our family and stuff. Because we know the struggles and stuff. And I just want to say, even though there are struggles that uh we have one thing for sure that you cannot take away from us and uh, this might get controversial a bit is that you even though we we deal with these certain things like we have our people right in cages bro stripped uh kids and family members being stripped away right <clears throat> locked in cages right now and like fucking dogs right that's what's happening right now but people don't talk about that right sure and I just want to say, no matter what, all this shit happens, no matter the, the, they're poor and all these different things, we work hard. That's the whole. That's the stereotypical right there. Working hard, it's, they're stealing our jobs, right? That's the whole stereotypical there. You can't take that shit away from us. Not only that, we don't bitch. We're not in the internet, right? Complaining. Oh my god, you should. This is racist, or oh my god, we're bitching and stuff like that. Like how many? Like really, how many people do you see that? If we're going to be completely honest, you know, I, I'm not trying to get too controversial, but that's just the truth. Mm-hmm. 
and and i really do like that they emphasize on family because that's another thing too bro like for us family means everything we have these gatherings and stuff and the, i truly think they did a good job representing it in this movie because even though they had so little they were on the verge of you know in poverty and you know losing being homeless house losing house and, and stuff like yeah, that all these struggles they were still able to be content and happy because they had each other and that is one thing bro that is truly represented in the mexican culture bro because you see so many people in poverty and all these different things but yet they're happy or content because they have family around they have friends and we really value that in our culture and i just wanted to rant really quickly about that shit because we know that's facts and i know a lot of people don't fucking talk about that and i'm not saying this just because i'm mexican or whatever you know uh it's just I just want to. I just want to state the truth, and that's the truth, right? Mm-hmm. Whether you guys fucking like it or not, whether y'all hate me, oh my god, Hector, don't get too, you know, whatever. But it's just, I'm not saying, like, I'm not saying, oh my god, we got to see more, or whatever. I'm, I'm just saying, just the truth. We don't see that a lot, for, and and to be honest, I don't need someone to be Mexican for me to like him a lot, right? Like, I, Batman's not Mexican. He's like my, my favorite character. You know, yeah. Spider Man's not Mexican. He's my favorite character. <laughs> fucking Vegeta's not Mexican, but I see myself as Vegeta, <laughs> right? So like, I'm not saying you know that we need more. Me ma- I mean, personally, I don't really care. I just care about how the character's done right. But it is cool to see how Coco and this movie really represents us and all that stuff. And another thing too, guys. Another thing too, really quickly. Even though yes, there are circumstances that were put on this earth, right? Whether you know it's poverty or you know all these different things. And they really emphasize that in the movie. It's like, oh, we can't, you know, we're not like a rich white asshole or whatever. We can't do these certain things because we're Mexican. Look at us or whatever. Like, sure, that's true. But I'm going to be honest. I think this is where, like, I kind of differ from most people is fuck your circumstances. Make it happen. Right? Because the I truly believe, man, like, you should not blame your circumstances for where you, um, you're not, ha- where for you were not, oh, sorry, how do you say this? Yeah, exactly. Or for, uh, where you're not, uh, you're not where you are, the way you want to be. That makes sense. Sorry, I'm like fumbling on my words because I'm thinking so much. Um, but does that, does that make sense? I want to make that really clear, guys. No matter where you are, what you're going through, don't let that shit dictate your fucking life. You know, you got to get yourself out, and it, it's definitely possible. And one thing for sure is that many people that don't give credit. I guess to foreigners, I'm not going to say just Mexicans. I'm going to say like foreigners, just, just like, you know, um, uh, Asian people, Indian people, and stuff like that, right? Middle Eastern or um, even ours is that these people have, they come to the United States with barely any money, mm-hmm. not l- knowing a, a lick of English, but yet they manage to find a job to support their family. And not only that, they sometimes even manage to start their own business. If you look at Chinese restaurants, these Mexican restaurants, all these different things. These people, right, come here with barely anything and they're able to do this. So to me, it's like, what the fuck is like your excuse? If that makes sense. That's why that's how I see it. It's like, hey, don't cry about your circumstances. Don't, you know, whatever. Sure, you could feel sad or whatever, but truthfully, at the end of the day, you, these are the cards you're dealt, and it's your job to get yourself fucking out of there. You know, that's one thing I just want to emphasize. Like, don't become a victim from for where you are obviously sure are there some situations where you absolutely can't do anything right like sure there are right Th- those are rare instances but i'm just saying in general do not think that you cannot do something based on your race your skin color your culture or whatever you know or just or or gender right oh i can't do this because i'm a woman or i can't do this because i'm a man or like i can't do this because i'm mexican or you know don't ever think that shit like that's just i want to make that very clear because even in this movie they did I guess, and like they did uh, show where, oh, we're Mexican. We can't do that. You know, and I just want to like kind of shut that down and be like, it doesn't matter what the fuck the circumstances are. You could fucking do it as long as you put your mind to it and you get yourself fucking out, you know, and immigrants and including our parents and stuff like that have their perfect examples of that coming here, you know, just like every other immigrant, whatever, starting from nothing, not knowing a lick of fucking English and making it fucking happen. I just want to say that, man. Sorry, I went on a fucking rant. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, my bad, man. I just want to say that, man. <laughs> I just want to say that, bro, because I'm just, it's just, it kind of facts, bro, with the whole Mexican thing not being represented, I guess, a lot. And yet, uh, you know, there's some people complaining and uh, whatever, man. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're worried. Okay, well, yeah, we talked about the Mexican represent- representation, man. That was yeah. it. 
Uh, my bad. I went on a whole monologue. I, I was like half for a second, man. <laughs> I wrote a, a trilogy. He's a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Javi. Um, yeah, fucking Javi. I think one last thing I want to mention, yeah, bro, right. is that I have a slight gripe against the movie. Okay. And that is that I felt like all the scenes with Blue Beetle were super cool and they were super fun. But okay. I didn't see enough of him. You think so? Do you think? Uh, maybe. Uh, if, okay, yeah. If we're talking about like fight scenes. You're right. We didn't get um, we didn't get a lot. That's we probably got what three? Three. Yeah, three. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay, three. Yeah. Okay, I I can see that, bro. Yeah, we didn't really see a, enough of him in the suit. Also, doing shit. another. I guess another gripe. Back to the Mexican representation. Really, I'm not gonna go on a tangent, but it's just something I mentioned after the pod, and I guess just really quickly is you know how the I mentioned this. Remember the parents Mario were like they would talk in English, and like they had broken Spanish. Like I get, I get why they're doing that, and then yes, obviously they sound like my parents or whatever. But truthfully, I truly think it would have been better if the parents and then the abuela they just spoke Spanish, just purely Spanish, and have uh, Jaime and her his sister, sister and Rudy speak English and do the Spanglish, and just kept the parents and the abuela just Spanish. Because if we're gonna be honest, bro, my parents never talk to me in English mm-hmm. ever. They speak to me in Spanish, and I reply in Spanish and English. Does that make sense? So like their, his mom and his mom could just say something in Spanish and then Jaime could just respond in English. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then she'll understand. Because that's another thing too is that my mom understands English but like obviously she knows how to speak it as well but it's like broken kind of like how in the movie whatever. Not Maybe not super. No, yeah, it's kind of broken. Um, but she understands it. So like whenever she talks to me in Spanish I say something in English or Spanglish she understands what I'm saying. You know, I, that's just a little, uh, that's not going to knock a point off for me. I'm just saying, like, I think, like, it would have hit hard mm. if, like, they did that. And and speaking of the Mexican representation, another movie, right, would be A Flaming Hot. Never seen it. That was a pretty good movie. Right, right, Mario? You've seen it? That was a pretty good movie, bro. Flaming Hot. Check it out. That one got, that, I got me in the feels, bro. I was damn. Like, damn. Because, like, like, dang, I got me in the feels, man. I'll have to check it out. It's on Disney Plus, right? Yes. It's on right, Disney Plus. It's it pretty out. cool. But yeah, uh, man, I feel yeah. like I feel like this movie didn't have enough sense right, enough of, Blue Beetle. of Jaime Reyes mm-hmm. as Blue Beetle. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I wish I would have I would have wanted more scenes with him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, it is it. No, is I agree, bro. Is. I think I think yeah, because we only got like, like three little fight more. scenes. I would like a little more. Yeah, you know what I mean. We get the true. first one where he gets his suit, and then two other ones. But like, I would have liked more. I guess at the end when like the whole third act happens, yeah, we get true. we got plenty of it. But I feel like a part of me still was left wanting a little more. Especially during the first act, maybe a little more in the second act, yeah. because I feel like that's when I felt like the movie was starting to drag a little bit, involving mm-hmm. the love interest and then the villain and all that shit. Yeah. But that was my one last gripe that I really had yeah, against bro. the movie. For sure. But I other definitely th- agree. Other than that, I don't know. Do you do you or Mario have anything else you want to bring uh, up? Let me see. Uh, I feel like I, I mentioned everything the, uh, I have to this, say. The, there were some parts with the CGI, bro, that you could tell was like noticeable. Really? I thought so. Uh, hmm. mostly I think what, what, what would you think Marvin uh, I said Marvin Mario uh, um, what do you think when he was fighting the boss I think right there is when like, I noticed it you know what I mean like with the whole boss fight mm. that's where like I noticed it but over but it was like it was like it wasn't a lot throughout the movie I don't like but yeah I don't think it's enough to like knock like an entire point just solely off of that yeah. I think there's a bunch of things together that would knock a point for me um but yeah, I think, you know, we're trying to not to be biased, guys. You know, we're, we we want to, you know, oh my God, we're finally represented. We're going to give it a 10 out of 10. Like, <laughs> shout out to fucking Josue. For Josue real. gave it a 10 out of 10. That's crazy. Josu. Josu. Yeah. Jose, listen, Josue, man. We got to be, we got to be objective here, man. We got to, you know, we can't, uh, we can't be blinded except for Coco. That shit, 10 out of 10. <laughs> no, that movie's fire for real. That is movie. 10 that out movie 10. is fire. But uh, I'm saying? trying to think, uh, is there anything else that we, uh, Miss, because there are some things I want to talk about, but it's spoilers. So, uh, yeah, I think that's going to be about you, it. Mario? Mario, is there anything left? No. So, I guess uh, we want to start with uh, ratings. Have you want to go first? And then we'll pass it to Mario and me. Um, I guess rating-wise, bro, like I said, I felt I really, really enjoyed this movie. Yeah, we're yeah. long, bro. I know, we're good. I'm just looking at the battery life. Oh, oh. Look at it. Uh, what's it called? I really enjoyed this movie. I very, I really, really enjoyed this movie, bro. I thought this movie was a good time. I was skeptical and I didn't know where the movie was going to go. But now after watching it, I'm super happy that the movie turned out with the way it was. Um, in a perfect world, I would have liked a little more Blue Beetle action in my movie. I would have liked a much more fleshed out, interesting villain. And uh, 
a love interest for him that was a little more believable, even though by the end of the movie, I ended up liking her a little more, but I don't know. Maybe if they would have wrote her character a little better, so I would have liked her faster or whatever, um, it would have worked out. I think the Mexican representation is very much there. I feel like the family and the whole theme about family definitely hit home. I feel like of the family members, George Lopez is easily the scene stealer. I want to see more of George Lopez in the new DC universe. I don't know how, but just James Gunn, man, if you can, bro. Say it again. Dude, that'd be funny. You imagine him and Peacemaker crossing over. Hey, James Gunn, Peter Saffron. Hey, man, make it happen, bro. George Lopez, he's got to be in more DC shit in the future. But I felt like I really liked this movie, bro. Other than a weak villain and uh, the pacing kind of being a little off. Um, and uh, I wouldn't say that the lack of Blue Beetle, in my opinion, like where I felt like I would have wanted a little more, I wouldn't say that'd be a, 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 enough for me to say that it's a negative it's just more of a personal little nitpick a gripe of mine but the biggest nit not, not nitpick uh, the biggest negative for me would be the 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 villain and uh sometimes some of the pacing but other than that everything else about this movie was really good i'm really happy with the way that the movie turned out and i really hope to see more of blue beetle and jaime reyes in the future for dc i want to see him in young justice i want to see him in justice league i want to see him interact with the greater dc i don't want this to be like uh like uh, like a superhero origin movie that never gets a sequel because the DC universe is just so confusing and it's so crazy right now that no one knows what the fuck going on. Like James Gunn and Peter Saffron needs to crack down and make more sequels and make him more involved in some more shit, bro. Especially because the actor's so young. He's got hella years ahead of him to grow old and play this character for easily a decade or something. I could see that. But uh, like I said, I really enjoyed what the way that this movie turned out and I'm happy that it met most of my expectations so i'm giving this movie an eight out of ten yeah what about you mario that's crazy i thought the way he was talking about i'm like there's no way this motherfucker giving it a nine i was about to say damn hey you know what low-key man if the villain was better yeah right if the villain was better it could have been a nine but the villain is what really made me like all right i don't give a fuck about this bitch like yeah, yeah, i just yeah, yeah. uh <laughs> <laughs> like I said, bro, no, if I you if that. you give a superhero a villain that's a, a inconvenient or b just a punching bag, it's just like nah, I don't yeah. give a fuck. Like it's just you're not interesting. But anyways, go ahead, Mari. Um, uh, so pretty much for me, man, this movie it, it this movie proved my worries wrong that I had about from the trailer. Like I said, uh, the trailer did have me thinking that I was gonna be left disappointed in this movie. That it was gonna make me feel like it's a very cheap movie. And in some aspects, it is, but I, I, w- I don't want to get into it in, until we get into the spoilers. Um, but out of 10, I would probably also give this an 8. Nice. Out of 10. All right, bet. Hector? I was about to say the same thing, man. <laughs> I, I really thought you were going to give it a 9. Yeah. I, I thought was. How I was going to give it a 9. Same. No, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I agree, man. Everything you guys said, I thought I was an 8, you know. Sorry, Josue. Josue said 10 out of 10. Hey, I think I think he was just biased a bit, man, because he was hyping up, bro. The Mexican representation is crazy. Like I get yeah. it, bro, but like, and it's there. No, yeah, but you just gotta like not be blinded by it, right? And mm-hmm. actually, still critique it and and be objective yep. about the flaws that this movie has. Yes, and it does have a few. And but yeah, it's still a great movie. Yes, you know, it's still fucking cool. I th- I truly believe that this, even though Blue Beetle does have its flaws. Mm. This movie is pretty cool, and it, I th- truly believe that it's a good start for James Gunn's new DCU. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, with that uh, with that being said, guys, now we're gonna go move into the spoiler sections. Uh, so this section, yeah. I don't want to jinx this. What? I don't want to jinx this by Why? saying this, but I feel like this um, this section of the podcast, the spoiler section, I don't think is gonna be very long because there's not a lot really to talk about. No, spoiler no. wise, there's not a lot. No, we could Maybe. just we could just talk about like the things that um, maybe bothered us or some yeah, yeah, cool yeah, yeah. stuff that we picked up. Right. But um, uh, I don't think this section is going to be very long because there's not a lot to talk about. There's not a no. lot to dissect. But there are some things that I do want to mention. And yeah. I know you guys want to mention. Yeah. So so we'll get to that, guys. So right, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll catch you in the spoiler section. All right. Three. Two, one. one. We saw Titty. Oh, no, that was Oppenheimer. Sorry. Oh shit. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, that's Mario's thing. Oh, you know what? We forgot. Oh, they probably kicked off. What? Stop already.
Oh, is it worth the movie yes, ticket? Yes, bro. We forgot to do that. That's Mario's thing. <laughs> Mario, go ahead. Whatever. You, you, you started what, off, people, girl. People already clicked off or whatever, bro. You started off, cowgirl. Yeah. Is it worth a movie ticket? And if so, what kind? Yeah, what the kind? Flash is $5 hey, Tuesday. I, I don't give a fuck. A joke. I know we did that as a joke, but Luis actually uh-huh. hit me up and he said he likes that. The, the movie ticket shit? The movie ticket shit and what kind of movie ticket? I uh, think I came up with that. No, yeah, the, the, yeah, the what, the what kind? Yeah, you did as a joke. Yeah. But like, he for real fucks with it. All right, well we're we're gonna keep doing it. <laughs> hey, all I know is, hey, listen, all I know is the Flash is still a five dollar Tuesday. I'm goof. That's fast. That's fast. Fast. It's, it's a it's a four dollar ticket dude, on Cinema a, Day. Dude, that's actually, dude, you know, dude, no, dude, that's actually a unique and funny way to rate your movies, as like a movie reviewer. Yeah. Instead of rating it from numbers, just be like, hey, it's a five dollar Tuesday movie, or like, hey, general admission, or like, hey, wait for streaming service. Bro, that's actually smart as fuck. I might steal that. I might patent that. <laughs> <laughs> future podcast. Five, hey, yo, ten, year, ten, 10 years from now, future podcasts are like, oh, how, how should we do it? Like, oh, should we Hector rate it? Yeah, but if we, but if we do that, we got to pay a band for fuck. that shit. <laughs> fuck. Fuck. <laughs> 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 I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but um, oh, shit. I, I I would most definitely say this is this is a movie, and I don't give a fuck if I'm biased on biased because of you know the Mexican re- representation. But I I truly do believe this is a movie that even if you're not Mexican or if you are Mexican, watch it. But if you're not, I think you will truly enjoy this movie. It's a good time. Um, I would say it's. I wouldn't say Dolby. I th- I would say general, but what we got for our general shit was like some new shit that AMC's doing. Laser, laser, They're yeah, doing that laser shit. Laser now, I don't get that. and I and we noticed I it. I up. noticed it. I was like, yo, it's different. It does look different, dude. The screen, I could tell. The screen seemed it clear. Used to be, it used to be more dim. Yeah, the there, screen was more dim. It wasn't mm-hmm. as bright. I could notice it. Mm-hmm. I, I remember because I remember during the flash, bro. I saw a dead pixel on the screen, and I called He's it out. He's dumb as hell. <laughs> He's dumb as fuck. <laughs> Fuck this guy. <laughs> yeah. He's so stupid. Yo, so I, yo I, I, I hit up the guy who owns AMC. I was like, yo, bro, this shit's yeah, trash. You it's got a OLED? Dead, it's, it's OLED. It's, and <laughs> next thing you know, two weeks later, bro, we got this laser shit at AMC. Hey, thank, thank me later, bro. Thank me later. Because these movies could be pricey. If, 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 if Javi doesn't see a movie that's uh, or, or watch a TV that's 4K and OLED, yeah. like if he does it, he gets pink eye. <laughs> like his eye his eyes get infected by just watching normal HD bro, bro if Avi watches a show in 1080p bro he needs eye drops every 30 minutes he's dumb <laughs> he's dumb as hell you guys are stupid as fuck I cannot believe this y'all are dumb <laughs> yo tell me why when I said that I was pretending to actually put eye drops in my eyes <laughs> That's funny, That's funny as bro. fuck. That's funny as fuck. <laughs> oh Y'all are God. dumb. Don't worry, but my TV's 4K, no, <laughs> oh, I can tell. Actually, I don't know either, bro. But um, no, nah, man, this movie is definitely worth a ticket. It's not worth. It's definitely not on five dollars. It's higher than that. Fuck it's no. worth general. just general. Yeah. Preferably AMC. Shout out AMC sponsors. No, not Dolby. Rating. General. I would say general. It's perfect. It's, solid. it's an enjoyable movie that I think anyone can have a good time in. What about you, Hav? Do you want to say you prefer to? I want to oh, say... Right? Uh, general? Oh, no. He's going to explain what it means. Oh, the laser. He's going to explain the laser. Yeah, I'm trying to find it, bro. It's just... It's tough. Yeah, go ahead. But <laughs> what's it called? Um, um, I I think... Um, I think this movie is enjoyable enough to watch in a general admission ticket. Yeah. I don't think... Uh, I mean... Here's the thing. I think it's rec- I recommend you that and that people buy this in a general admission ticket, mm-hmm. right? Like the laser at AMC, the new shit that they got going on, which is general admission, guys. I know it sounds fancy, but it, that's going to be the new general admission. The tickets are slightly pricier from what well, Mario maybe, said. Eight, well, maybe at well, locations near right. us, because what if people? Are oh yeah, there's the, there's else. other locations. I would say this is a laser by a uh, laser by AMC. Worth if you have, if your AMC has, it. if you want to push yourself to like ultra screen, super screen, or IMAX. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. I don't, I wouldn't be mad at it. That's totally up to you. I wouldn't say it's an overkill. If you want to watch it, spend the extra money, go ahead. But it's definitely comfortably a, a, a general admission. Yeah. Don't wait for $5 Tuesday. It's a movie that's worth watching as soon as you guys can, in mm-hmm. my opinion. You give yours. I still got to look for this fucking thing. I, yeah, for me, just general admission. 
Yeah. All right, so now let's get into spoilers. Weezy right. Titty. Weezy Titty. He's a titty. What's going on? <laughs> I forgot. We forgot to uh, give like a plot breakdown in the non-spoiler, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah, it's an origin movie. Yeah. Um. I guess, uh, fuck, what was I say? There was a specific, uh, do you, okay, uh, the final boss scene, you know, like, is, they were, they were doing a Tobey Maguire mask fucked up, like, yeah, yeah. whatever. I feel like there was a gap. Dude. Right here. No, but listen, 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 listen. I didn't like that half. I didn't like how he looked. With, with the, his the broken fuck, mask? Yeah. Like, hmm. I didn't like it. It looked weird to me. It looked off. It looked like the helmet was too big for him. And didn't I say this before? Yeah. Didn't I say this? Why? That I w- w- before the movie came out, I said that the helmet looks too big on in his body. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember that? Have yeah, I think so. <clears throat> and so that scene proved my shit yeah. because you could see the gap. You could, could see, see the gap too, yeah, yeah, you could see the gap. It was too big, and I just thought I like it looks. Don't get me wrong. It, like throughout the movie, he looks cool. Yeah, okay, yeah, okay. I just think that if it was a little bit slimmer. Like a more tight, kind of like a like a little bit of like a Spider Man vibe. I've seen that. I would agree with you. It would have been. It would have looked more proportionate and it looked cool. But yeah, that part I didn't really like. I don't know, man. I didn't really like. What'd you guys think of the uh, the 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 actual like the villain, the the robot guy, and his like backstory? I didn't want to. I didn't like, want to bring up. That? I didn't. Uh, I didn't. Yeah, wanna... I don't want to bring that up either because I was like a spoiler. Yeah, after. but I felt like he was. He was leaning towards that generic villain of the punching bag that I yeah. mentioned earlier until the very, the very end when we got an origin with him. Yeah. Granted, his origin was kind of rushed in a flashback and like it was kind of like a montage, but yeah. it still was something. Mm-hmm. And at this point, I was just like, <sighs> like at this point, I'll take any or villain origin story because that we was have the most nothing. we got. That was the most. And we he wasn't even the main villain. He, I would say he, he was, was like just, a puppet. He was a henchman. Yeah, he was like a henchman. He was a henchman. Shit. But I personally felt like um, that his uh, he was just kind of like the punching bag sort of generic villain until we got that um, until we got that backstory and I think the backstory is what made me be like all right he's cool after all yeah even though he ends up dying yeah he ends up uh, sucks killing himself man dragging the girl with that was a crazy death right no there, bro, bro you know what Mario wanted to talk about the death hold on yeah talk about that scene when that he when crazy. Blue Beetle escapes yeah when Blue Beetle okay escapes. so there's this one scene in the movie where he, they Blue Beetle is, Blue Beetle is captured and he's like he's hooked up to this like he's thing milk, he's being, yeah yeah he's getting milked like the like the Teenage Mutant Turtles dumbass right and yes he was he was he literally wow. was he was hooked up to the wires I know you said milked no but, said. when Teenage Mutant Turtles that's what they say no I know I know I know he's like he He's getting milked like the Ninja Turtles. I'm like, the small said like Blue Booty was getting milked. <laughs> oh, that's what, I, that's what he meant. Okay, I, I know what he means. But, um, well, that's what they said in the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah. So, milk uh, this. So eventually the power goes out and Blue Beetle escapes, right? And there's this side character in the movie. He's not, he's kind of irrelevant, but you see him through, but he's Mexican, but he's, yeah, yeah. So he's raw. <laughs> but, uh, he, throughout the movie he's, he's shown, but in this moment he's here in this room, right? And the, the, the weak villain, the girl keeps, re- t- t- keeps saying the wrong name. I forgot what he Sanchez. is. Jimenez Sanchez. or something. Yeah, Sanchez. Sanchez, right? And she tells him, like, like Sanchez, like, stop him or whatever the fuck. Like, he can do anything, right? But he gets fed up to the point where he's like, my name is not Sanchez. My name is... I do it with some really long shit. He some, pulled some Ricardo. No, he did some Esteban shit. shit. He's like, me from, uh, from the Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Yeah, did, like a long ass yeah. name, right? So he goes up to the door. He puts in the key code. Let's Blue Beetle walk out, right? Then he's like, he's he like, go. Too. He could have escaped too. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Because then he wouldn't be able to destroy the. Oh yeah, the key pass. So he closes the door. He 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 uh, destroys. I would have got out either way. Yeah, but it's one of the things where like he's buying him time, right? But uh, so he smashes the keypad, right? And then behind him is that that sub uh, villain, the which one, the one that's Omac, CGI. yeah, or Omac or whatever. Omac, yep. one man army core. Something like that. Yeah, something like that, right? And I actually Googled it, and that's an actual thing in DC. Oh, yeah. in the that's DC comics, the Omax. It's I like figured. a it's like a core, so it's comic book accurate. And um, as he's like looking at Blue Beetle run away, we get a shot of him, the the guy who helped. Comic book accurate. Even the fucking uh, the ship. The ship. Yeah, it is. I know. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, he gets stabbed straight yeah, through yeah, the back. Yeah. And it's one of those moments where it reminds you, this, this, is, b- DC, this is DC, bitch. <laughs> this ain't Marvel. Yeah, bro. We can see yeah, blood. Man. Man. I was like, damn. Oh, like, oh, it's DC, that's right. Yeah, bro. That's one of the reasons why I love DC, man. Remember 
the, Pressing the, the mic. Yeah. Oh shit. Sorry. R- remember the part where like they I forgot what it's called, man. The ve- the, the vehicle, the beetle, oh, the blue it's beetle. When it's, it's crawling and it stabs into the soldier and kills yeah. it. Like what the fuck? That was crazy. And I love those moments, man. No, yeah, it's cool. Right, what did you guys think? Okay, I guess I want to ask you guys this, right? If you guys had blue beetle powers, would you kill or would you not kill? Because that's the thing that happened here where he had multiple chances to kill. <laughs> Not Omak, but like in general, yeah. yeah, he had so many chances to kill, but like the um, per the what was it called again? I forgot the name. I forget the name, bro. Oh, Something con- the, the 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 scarab basically yeah, yeah. controlling him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is like. Almost kind of forcing him to like kill whatever, and then it, it's not until Jaime's like, "No, I don't kill. I'm not a killer. I'm not a killer." Until it finally registers the scarab, and so like he, you know, he Blue Beetle can kill, but he yeah. chooses not to. Yes. And I guess my question is like, would you guys kill if you guys Blue Beetle's power? Yes. You would. Yes. If yeah, the bad guys were that bad. Yeah, but you know, the, but it's yeah, but it's a typical, you know, like they no, wanna sure, make, like they want to make him a really likable morale. No, character. of course, but like realistically, if the, I have soldiers. Yeah, pointing guns at my family, and my father them. dies of a heart attack. It's a fucking raps. Yeah, and I actually want to talk about that scene. Okay, but uh, I looked up the name for the blue beetle. It's like Kajida, Kajida, Kajida is the name of the the of the person who Jaime talks to. Movie. Kajida would also like speak Spanish, which yeah. I thought was pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, okay, so okay, to me, bro, fuck what I guess. It's because I like Batman, bro. Batman don't kill. But then again, I would. I don't know, he man. No, he was. And that's because what happened to his father. And I want to get into that. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about that scene, man? I loved it. That was crazy. I, loved it. I wasn't expecting the dad to die. Yeah, right? His father dying from a heart attack. Right there. We, and he was in the beginning of the movie, you get alluded that uh, he had we get a heart attack. hinted yeah, that he had a heart attack before. And he dies because they're being raided right at his house. And he ends up dying, bro. And he Dude. gets captured by the villain, so he was powerless to 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 save him Dude. or do anything. Oh man, that's Dude, that feeling, bro. And that whole scene afterwards of like the ambulance, like you know, trying yeah. to revive him, and the family's out to the side, and and they're like look optimistic, but then when they hear the flat line, the flat they line, immediately they start break down. bawling and shit. Damn, man, that, that shit actually hurt, man. that scene actually hit home, bro. Yeah, that was man. a good like in the feels scene, bro. Yeah, so bro. I got to give him credit for that for that Absolutely. whole scene, dude. I really liked it as well, and like. You know, uh, the whole scene of, I guess, Jaime meeting his dad in, like, the afterlife or something? Yeah, it was something like that. That whole scene that went on, that was pretty cool. Uh-huh. Um, but, yeah, that, that really hit home, man. I was like, damn. Yep. You know? And they really emphasize Animo, right? Mm-hmm. They emphasize that. What, what does that mean again? Uh, is that uh, 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 courage or brave I, or I think hope? I think it's courage. Yeah, right? Courage? Look it up, bro. Because I know that word, but if I'm going to be honest with you, like, I don't hear it a lot from my Mexican peers. Animo. Animo. You know what I mean? And they use some slang, too. They're like, they used, I believe, like, jale. Like, do you know what that, you know what that is, Mario? Like, jale? Google Translate's giving me cheer up. Wait. Cheer up? Animo. Really, dude? You think so? Wait, hold on. Animo. I could have swore that meant, like, courage or something. Animo. Uh, but yeah, Mario, do you know what like Halle means? Halle? Yeah, Halle. Doesn't that mean like like they're like to go like like uh? It, oh, okay. So it other other words would be mind encouragement. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm seeing here courage, boldness, courage, spirit, soul. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. We're so right, courage. Typical. Yeah. I was about to say what the fuck. No, like uh, como que hay Halle. Right, well, meaning like there's uh, work, there's jobs, there's like the I hale, is I, yes, like right, and they use that, and I'm like surprised. I'm like, I only hear that word amongst my dad when I'm at the shop with him, and with um, with like his buddies and like his and, like our other clients and stuff. I always hear that like, come on, hale. Speaking of shop, what? Yeah. They had they had an auto shop. They had an auto shop. I was like, damn, Hector thinks he's Blue Beetle for real. I'm a yeah. hand Blue Beetle. Roku City needs me. You know, now I'm playing, but um, Chicago needs me. And Kaja? Kaja? It's actually my voice. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny as fuck. That'd be funny as hell, yeah. I, I wonder if y'all, like, would y'all take being a superhero serious if it was me talking? Fuck nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, he would like, tell me, like, move, go right now, dive into that water. I'm like, 
Hob, are you sure, bitch? Like, <laughs> are you tricking me right now, man? Would it be cool if the AI, instead of talking like a typical AI, like it yeah. was sentient? So I would, t- so like my AI, I would talk like how I would talk normally. Yeah. So instead of just being like, you know, hi, man, like three people to your right. Like instead of like a typical, yeah, 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 we'd yeah. just be like, hey, man, look out. That's her. <laughs> Where? Like, Hobby, what you doing, girl? Yeah, oh, like you also, mentioned about, dude, I. <laughs> another thing. Fuck that. Another I thing I never... also uh, didn't like, bro, with Blue Beetle is the UI. Yeah, I didn't like that. It looked too alien. It looked, yeah. I mean, it is alien, but it looked like blurry. Like you can't see shit. Like shit. Yeah, bro. I did not like it. I thought could have been like cooler, but whatever. Nothing. Not a. I guess not a big deal. Um, whatever. They also mentioned sicarios. Oh yeah, that's crazy. They mentioned hitmen from Mexico, right? The grandma. Uh, The revolution. They they do the Mexican revolution. Oh my god, you want to talk about that? The grandma. that whole that that it, it's a a part of the movie, but it's a whole issue. Which one of the reasons why I deducted a point off this shit? Oh, wow. one was the villain, and two was because of all these like, okay, man, like, come on, you're like, you're doing too much, right? So the grandma used to be a what's the word, a revolutionist? Uh, she was a rebel. A rebel. In the Mexican Revolution. Yeah, so she was a rebel, which is why the it's it's the story's excuse for like why she can use a minigun. In, in in the third act and the final and like in that island shit and I, but I don't give a fuck if you were this right you are probably like what 60 maybe pushing 70 doing this shit that's that's pushing it for me and like no bro like that's not believable and I know you have another one which I know you don't we were like how the fuck does he know how to do all oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that one, I'll let you explain that one but to me there's a, like the, like the family being involved in the final I, I get it you know familia every let's do it together. let's save our son Right, I get it. The Mexican spirit, right? But either way, I'm just like, eh, I don't know about that, yeah. bro. You know what I mean? It's just like y'all pushing it. And I know Hector's going to say one that I want to say, but I'm going to let you say it. Like, uh, really quickly with, with the whole grandma thing. Like, she knows the strategic moves, and that's fair. That's fair, yeah. Like, she can plan but it But she busted out a minigun that probably weighs 100 pounds or something mm-hmm. while it's shooting. That recoil or something, maybe. I don't that's know. Shit. So the yeah. fact that she's doing that, I'm like, all right, man, come on. But whatever. What'd you say? There's this video on the internet of a grandma who works at, like, Costco, right? Okay. And she's, like, skating. Oh, it's, it's a, it's a video. Get a new mic, bro. bro, yeah, I know. We're going to get one. But it's a video, because uh, we're talking about grandmas, right? Unrealistic holding a minigun, bro. There's this video on the internet. Maybe, I don't know if you guys saw it, but maybe the one of the listeners have saw it. seen it. My bad. Uh, where it's like a grandma and she works at, like, some grocery store and she has a scanner where you scan items, right? But it's, like, a one you can hold in your hand. So when she scans it, she like she she like scans it. And you know how it makes the beep sound. So every time it does that, she goes like this. She like cocks it back like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I see people with the cameras. Like, damn, how much kick that thing got? <laughs> you should look, look it up for how. Look it up because I don't think I've seen it. No. Okay, so uh, another thing as well, guys, is Rudy. As we know, he's uh, George Lopez's char- um, character. Another thing I was I was whispering this to, uh, to Mario, bro. Is how does this motherfucker know about this tech and shit? He probably doesn't. Like he, like bro, he built like an EMP, right? He, he called it the Chapulín Colorado. I can't even say the fucking word. El Chapulín is what the name of the machine. El Chapulín, was. yeah, but they based it off of uh, Chapulín Colorado. What a weirdo! Yeah, he's showing the video. <laughs> what the fuck? He goes like, I know, like that bitch got recoiled. <laughs> There's an edit of like of of, of it actually like shooting bullets. <laughs> but anyways. Uh, so yeah, he builds this EMP called uh, you know El Chapulín because it was red right, and yellow, right? And he builds this EMP because um, in order uh, Jaime is looking a uh, way out out of the scarab, right? And what was her name Jenny was like, hey, I have a way, but we need a key, and they needed to sneak in this building where this key was, which it was a watch, and so they wanted to go there undetected and um, fucking. Rudy was like, I got something, El Chapulín. And it was like an EMP system. How the fuck did he build that? Who knows? Right? Who cares? Another thing. No, half. stop, stop. <laughs> no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do that, half. Who cares? It's George Lopez. No. I only let shit slide if it's Jason Statham. <laughs> this motherfucker. <laughs> like him stopping Megalodon with his foot. Um, which, that's another, that's another movie that we didn't even watch or review. Sorry about that, guys. Um, but, and he also... Um, they get to this, uh, what's it called? Uh, the secret hideout of the original Blue Beetle, 
right? But that uh, original Blue Beetle that wasn't, um, what's it called? Uh, chosen by the Scarab. He was mostly invented technology, like Batman, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. To be Blue Ble- to be uh, Blue Beetle himself, and Rudy knows about him and stuff. And he was able to magically fuck around with this computer and figure out information and stuff. And I'm like, it was a normal computer. Really? Yeah. Was it? Are you sure? Yes. It was a normal computer? Yeah. Okay, fine, fine. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. I'll let that slide. How the fuck did he fly that shit? It doesn't matter. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yes, it does. It's like, what the f- At least, at least, you know what they could have done? There's a clue to reason. Look, Slow you know what they could have done? Listen, listen to me. This is, I'm in the writing room. I'm in the writing room. Oh, shit. This is what they could have done. Sure, he was hyped as fuck. When he's, he recognized, oh, he's Blue Beetle, whatever. Well, he could have done or something. Uh, this like I said, it's gonna throw off the movie because like if he if if I say what I'm about to say, that means when he saw the scare for the first time, he would have known what it was, and I think that'd be cool. Is we could is we could have him be obsessed with Blue Beetle as a hero. Uh huh. Have him obsessed with the Blue Beetle. Oh my God! Like how he was. Yo, this is Blue Beetle. Right? Remember? Have him obsessed to the point like he'd take pictures. He would do a bunch of research. He spotted his ship and like. You know, he finds out like so. He he maybe like found certain tech when it, where Blue Beetle was fighting. He took it. And he's experiment. He's like whatever, right? So when he sees a scarab, he's like, oh, he freaks out. Oh my god, this is the scarab. Or like, oh my, like, what the fuck? He's like, what does that mean? He's like, what the fuck? You don't know what this is. This is the most dangerous thing. Is like, and that's when the da- the girl the the sister could be like, nah, let me see that. Hey, what are you doing? And then that's the whole frenzy happens, right? And then it plays back into like, oh my God, this is the cave. This is what I've been dreaming of or whatever. And that's how he knows how to fly the machine. Uh, th- I think I have an idea how to fly this because, you know, because he was so devoted to Blue Beetle and he was researching him and stuff. Does that make sense? Come on, yeah. give me that. Would that yeah, be cool? but, the, but, but, but uh, it's just one of those things where like they know the audience is not going to care. They just needed they just needed someone to conveniently know how to fly the plane just to get the okay, plot going. Okay, but come on, Hav, objectively speaking, come on, that wasn't a gr- that wasn't like a good idea though. Like they could have done better on that. A lot of movies do that though. Like what? Like it wasn't like it wasn't exactly like a lot of movies do that, and like a lot of people because they know that the audience is not gonna think of it as a big deal. And if people do think it's a big deal, like it's just nitpicking the wrong things. So a lot of times movies are very lenient with their with with their conveniences. Uh-huh. There's a bunch of conveniences that they'll. Well, I that they say, do it just to kind of move the plot forward. It's like, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Like, but right. like, so what? It's a nitpick. War, like okay. amongst like the bigger, the but bigger to be honest, story. that's what hinders. Uh, that's what hinders it becoming a great, like, a, like an amazing movie. Because if you really look at amazing movies, there's not necessarily conveniences like that. There can be. Mm. So a lot of times, a lot of times people overlook it because the the rest of the movie is still good. Uh, I don't know, man. Like I'm look like the Batman. I'm trying. I'm looking at the Batman. I don't think there was any like moments like that. I'm trying to think. I don't know. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, because that's <laughs> come on, Mario. No, no, whatever. We could we could disagree on that. I don't agree. I mean, do you agree with me on that or like he says? What, to me, I thought it just threw me off a bit. I'm like, how does fuck? How does a guy know how to fly this bitch? Like, or but like, do you see how simple what I just said? What's it's so simple? Yeah, that could have just. You know what I mean? Like, that could have fixed that. Come yeah. On. Like, you know, just, I don't know. Put me in the writer's room. That's all I'm saying, man. Uh, I don't I don't know. That's just that's just what I think. You thought it wasn't a big deal. I don't know. I think you're being biased because it's your result. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm telling you, a bunch of movies do that. A bunch of movies have conveniences. And they get overlooked. Because, mm. like, who cares? I don't know, man. I think that one was too... I think that like, one was Endgame too had, in, had conveniences. Mm, but not like that. This guy is a normal human being, and knows how to fly this ancient, this not ancient, uh, this technological advanced airplane. Like he could, they couldn't even make him a veteran of of a, a veteran pilot. Like they couldn't even like do something. Like I don't know to just explain that. Like, like I think that should like sure you're right. There are conveniences off, but to that extent, I don't think so. I, I have to disagree with you on that. I mean, let us know in the comments, guys. Um, that's just what I think, man. I think with that, I think that one was just a convenience, but that one was just, I think, too broad. Like, too, all right, you're reaching it. You know what I mean? Kind of like um, a perfect example would be Wonder Woman, yeah. where she made the whole jet invisible, even though she said, I've never done this before. The only last time I did it is I turned a cup invisible, and I literally almost fainted or whatever. Oh, and, then, and then instantly she was able to trans- to 
transform a whole plane invisible. That's a convenience, but to, that's reach. I think that's reaching, especially with a guy flying that. Uh, what was he? A pilot of what again? A World War One or Two pilot. He was a World War One or World War Two pilot, manualing a modern pilot. Have you seen the cockpit of a modern fucking? Uh, yeah. Come on, bro. And compare it to a World War One plane or whatever. Come on, man. Yeah, and like that's a convenience. You're right. There are conveniences, but to me, that's just that's reaching. That's like right there. Like, okay, bro. What's World War Two pilot have flying (laughs) flying a modern? I know a modern plane is like all right. And the conveniences stick out more when the movie is not good. I would say that's true because now shit ton of you pointed out. No, yeah, I agree with that. No, I agree with that. I'm not saying this. I'm not saying that this moment uh, made the movie bad. Right. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like they could have maybe fixed it a bit, or like at least have the daughter do it. Have the daughter, like, oh yeah, I know about this because my dad, you know, taught me like some of these things. Come on, man! Like, come on! I like (laughs) fucking Javi's like it doesn't matter, bro. I like it goes like this. Bro, it's because, bro, like, 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 come on. Javi's not seeing this right now. Like, like they could have just done that. Have the daughter. Oh, yeah. My f- He's like, I think this is how we do it. I see my daughter do it all the time. He would take me here. Okay, cool. It's not like, whatever. We're good. But no, random Rudy. Yo, bro, what we on? <laughs> come on. Whatever, bro. That's just, that's just me, man. Let us know in the comments. Um, okay, we talked about the, 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 the father... Uh, we talked, yeah. We talked about the father scene. We talked about the uh, the other villain guy. Um, was there? Uh, I th- I'm trying to remember if there was anything else that I wanted to mention. Is there anything else, Mario, that you wanted to mention? Was there anything? Uh, those were my those were my those were my two critiques. And then, have you already mentioned your biggest two critiques? It was the, we already talked about the villains. And yeah. The, uh, the, what was the other one again? The villain and the pacing. The pa- oh, and the and the, the love interest. Yeah. The. Yeah, okay. Well, I mentioned in the spoiler free section that there's a scene where like you they explain her origin but like it just felt and, like and, the pacing was and off. What was her origin again? Uh that her something about her mom dying at a young age and then her dad got lost as Blue Beetle, so she's like an orphan and she's by herself or whatever the fuck, but like the, the dad it, died. No, the, 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 the Yeah, her fa- her her father was Blue Beetle. Really? Yes. Oh, I, thought, oh, I, I, I completely Ted Cord. I completely yeah. misread that scene. What'd you think? It happened. I thought oh, the dad, shit, bro. I forgot. You know, I'm a fucking. I uh, what's it called? I from what I understood until you guys pointed that out to me. I thought the dad just got obsessed with Blue Beetle. No, he oh, said oh, there was oh, two oh. Blue Beetles. There was two of them. There was two of them. There was yeah. two of them. Oh, I okay. I, I must have misheard one that. One of them, and their and their names are actually the ones that are from the comics. The names, I knew there the, was the previous Blue Beetles from the, the animated the show. Have the OG suit, bro. Like, yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, because okay, so he said that there's two. There were two Blue Beetles before Jaime Reyes, Ted Cord, who was Jenny's dad, and he was the one who mostly fucked around with the gadgets and shit, all the mm-hmm. the plane and all that that they fucking used. And then the other Blue Beetle was Dan Garrett, yeah. mm-hmm. and that was the one whom the Scarab merged with, mm-hmm. and the and the and the Scarab was freed because Dan Garrett ended up dying, and they went to the father. No, no, it never merged. It never, it never no, merged. Oh, so he just became... The father was acting like Batman. Ah. Basically. So he's like not really Blue Beetle. But he, he was he, acting he, Blue Beetle, but like by making these gadgets, gadgets. Like Batman. Ah, okay. That's why. I, cause exactly. I, I, I didn't take him, him as Blue Beetle because I'm just like, oh, because they said like, oh, he, he didn't choose my father. So I'm just like, oh, he's not Blue Beetle. That's how I took it. No, no, no. Ah, okay. Because that's, that's why I, cause when you said like he became obsessed with Blue Beetle, I'm like, oh, that's why he wanted to, he wanted to himself, but he wanted this to guy. be... Yeah, yeah. He just guy. does gadgets and stuff, oh, and okay. I like how like the statues, the statues of the of the costumes were yeah, comic book. Accurate. Why is that? Why is that third one empty? No. If there was two, what's the third one? It was probably his. It was probably her dad's. The one that he's currently wearing. Yeah, oh, but okay. when he disappeared and shit. Because there's a scene mm. where she's like looking at the empty statue. Yeah, and she's. That's what I assume too. Let's talk about. The, I guess the end credit. Oh, I mean, in the end credits, we saw we're back in the Blue Beetle cave, and the computer turns on by itself, and it's an audio recording of Ted Cord confirming that he's alive. Yeah. And he's telling, like, you know, someone tell my daughter that I'm not dead, that I'm actually alive, and then we get, she's got that she's he's she's got to come save us or something like that, like or we got to uh, something, so yeah, something like that, bro. But I looked it up, and apparently, um, 
the credits for this movie did not credit the actor who voiced Ted Cord. So you whoever, his face. huh? You couldn't make out his face. No, yeah, they didn't show his face. I thought they were gonna show his face. It was gonna yeah. be someone like a big Mexican. Yeah. Well, no, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, yo, fuck Javi, Javi, imagine if it was a rock. What would you do? Nah, bro. Would, would this I would be, be a, so angry. Would you actually? <laughs> I nah, bro. I, I would be so would fucking it. angry, bro. How do you not like The Rock? No, I didn't say that. Okay. Well, Isn't that I don't like okay, him? What do you think of him, man? I just think he's a... He's all right. He's a bitch. <laughs> he's a mediocre actor. Yeah. That's what a Rod said. He will never get an Oscar. He'll never get nominated. He's no Leonardo DiCaprio. He's no... Uh, get shut on, kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, he's having a mic. He's having a mic. This is, all right. Sorry. Uh, no, I, I got nothing against The Rock. No, yeah, yeah. So, so okay, they didn't credit... Uh, the actor. Why? I don't sense, know. Though, Makes want, them... They want to keep it a secret. Or maybe they don't have a casted yet. Probably. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's fair. But that's I was kind of hoping they would show his face and it would be like a... Like, like somebody a, we knew? Like some big character. Like, like maybe he's Mexican Luna. or Latino. Who, like, like who? Diego Luna. I don't know a bunch of Mexican actors. All I know is Diego Luna because of Andor. Oh, that guy. The guy who plays Andor in Star Wars. Hey, man, he, hey. In the show, he did amazing, phenomenal act performance. I mean, that would be cool. Is Oscar Isaac He's Latino. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't know I see him as... Do you see him as that? Yeah, he would have to be someone older. Yeah, that's what I was say. He might be too young. He would have to be someone a little older. So, I don't know. We sent the Fernando. <laughs> they bring him back from the dead. Like, 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 it's yeah. funny as hell. It's Chilino. If we're, if we're, if we're talking about uh, bringing people to the dead, Chilino. Chil- what about Chilino, bro? They're playing his. Uh, Rudy was playing him. Mm. Bro, he was. I, I mean, I like his music. Yeah, bro. Mario out here swatting flies and shit. What the fuck? Yeah. And I have a fly in my room, man. Fuck. I'm going to turn it to Blue Beetle and get his. Dumb, man. Dumb. All right. Um. It's a fly swatter as a gadget. You can imagine it. I can make it. Yo, low key, bro. That's actually funny, dude. Hey, yo, if I imagine it, it can happen. Yo, to me, why I thought of what you thought of. I was like, yo, are you crazy? That's crazy. Jenna Jenna Ortega. Jenna. No, he likes the Jenny girl. His love interest. I don't need you, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. Speaking of her, like, is she, uh, have, do you know her from anywhere? Is she, like, a well known actor like or something? Yeah, I know her. I feel like I've seen her She's 28. Wow. She does not look 28. Wow. She looks like, probably like 24. I'm gonna have to slide. She's Namor's uh, ex girlfriend. Oh, yeah, wow. Hey, Namor. Hey, Namor going crazy. <laughs> Namor going crazy. But listen. <laughs> I let it look. She she attractive, right? I let it slide. It's Jaime Reyes. I get it. If it was Jenna Ortega, I would have lost my shit. <laughs> <laughs> if they if they brought oh, Jenna, uh, if, I, I said, oh, Jenna, if they brought Jenna Ortega in that role, I would have been pissed, bro. I'd be like, man, I can't keep doing this. <laughs> how many people would have First to? How many three. men have to murder? How many men are my death note? On my death note. <laughs> I've never seen death note, but I know Mario That's likes wrong. that joke. You like it. Um. No, but yeah, okay, so th- that was the end credit. Uh, there was another end credit, and it was, you know, just Chapolin, yeah, right? Chapolin Colorado. Yeah, I wish it was uh, the, the I, I forgot his saw, name, man, the live action. It's Chapolin. Chespirito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I oh, sorry, sorry. No, I was saying, I'm speaking about El Chapo. Um, El Chapo? I mean, El Chapolin, my bad. My bad, my bad, my Hey, El Chapo, bro, we respect you, man. Don't come after us. Don't send your goons after us, bro. What the fuck? I don't know what this man's talking about. <laughs> no, bro, bro, my bad, my bad. No, I saw a TikTok where, the, you know how, like, you see TikTok of, like, shows that were, like, generational, where, like, they defined an era, and you see them then to the now? Okay. It was one of those, but if that show, literally today, I'm not even bullshitting you, and you know the woman, the older woman that had a crush on, like, that business suit dude? You know what I'm talking about? Had the mustache? Are you talking about El Chavo del Ocho? El Chavo del Ocho? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's her name is... He yeah, plays, plays I know. I'm, talk, I'm talking about the actual, like, the live action, not, not the cartoon. Yeah, that's what I'm I know, yes. Oh, yeah. But so you're talking, about, you're talking about the woman. Yeah, the woman. You know what I'm talking Doña about. Doña Florinda. Doña bro. Florinda. I bro, thought... What's the other guy's name? Professor Girafales. Yeah, him. Bro, yeah, she Girafa. He's tall like a giraffe. Oh, yeah, he's yeah, the tall one. Yeah. Señor Barriga. Barriga's in a stomach because he was fat. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Don Ramon. 
He was just Don Ramon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the crybaby. Hell no. Kiko was just like a nickname, I guess. Yeah. Anyways. But uh, no, I saw them of like all of them like then that they had their age in the year and then now, bro, that chick, bro, she aged like fine wine, bro. Really? Like she looks like amazing for her age. I was like, what the fuck? She's in her 70s. Bro, she looked, I was like, wow. I was like, damn, I thought you would not like wrinkly, nothing, bro. But everybody else kind of, yeah. Okay. Kind of how you expect them. Everyone to else fucking died. Yeah. Dead ass? A lot of them are. Yeah, a lot of them I, I know Don Ramon passed away. He Chavo passed. He died. was the first one. Him too. And El Chilindrina? No, no way. No, she's still alive. She's still Kiko's alive. still alive. Senor Barriga's uh, still alive. Pro- Professor Girafales passed away. Fuck, man. Dude, my my dad loves that show. I think El Chavo Ocho was in... Uh, it's on Netflix. I think, I think so. it was on Netflix. I lost it. I, or I saw it one time. Mexico, my dad, bro, he, he loves it. It's a great... It, all those just it's funny, man. Shorts. I'm not going to lie. I mean, El Chavo del Ocho was definitely my favorite. My second favorite, obviously, because, you know, I'm biased, right? Superheroes. is El Chapulín Colorado. Mm-hmm. But his other sitcoms, I could never get into. Or I just never watched them. Like, yeah. when he pl- when, like the one where he plays the doctor. When he's got, when he's got like, the, the white hair wig and the mustache and he wears a trench coat. Yeah, I haven't seen that. Or the other one where he plays a burglar and his friend, like, they're both, like, robbers or whatever. Um, like, those other skits, like, I've never gotten into those. I was just mostly into El Chapulín Colorado. Mm-hmm. And El Chavo del Ocho. Yeah, those were the two that I was. Those, mostly yeah, those were funny. You know, speaking of, I guess Mexican, show, Mexico, Mexican shows, real quick. What about El Familia Peluche? That's my shit. That's funny as fuck, bro. Anyways, <laughs> dude. Oh, hey. What? Eugenio Derbez, Ted Cord. <clears throat> like, who's that? That's the guy from El Familia Peluche. Ah, no way, bro. Him? You think so? Hey, man. What you mean, cowgirl? That would be fucking raw, dude. I didn't think about that. The guy from uh, el da- the dad, right? The dad from el, uh, el Familia Peluche. You know, like their whole dude, their entire house was like furry and shit. Remember, they would have yes. wear furry clothes and everything. Him? Nah, I don't think so, man. No. <laughs> that didn't sound like him either. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, he's sixty-one. I mean, he's yeah. got the, the age. age wore, the age matches. Yeah, yeah bro. Yeah. Everything was furry because they were called La Familia Peluche. Peluche yeah, yeah. I thought it was, but it was colorful too. Yeah. I really like that too. And the animations and the backgrounds were all like fake. Another small detail that they did that I noticed is on the couches, they put that plastic shit. Yeah. You know, like where the dad, where they were like, when the dad was in the I afterlife. I've never dealt with that in my own family. Uh, I think I have before, but I, for me, it's mostly like our grandma, like my grandma, at least for my our dad's side. Huh? Mm. Like she would do that. Or like our, the, I've been to some houses, like my mom's friends, they would do that. They would put the plastic trash like plastic on the couch and it's funny because they did that bro they did that with the couch where the dad was sitting in the afterlife i yeah. saw that I'm like oh shit they actually got it to the t but anyways but anyways guys that's gonna be it i mean we pretty much covered everything we uh we hope you guys enjoyed uh this review and uh we'll catch you guys in the next one uh until then take care he has it on my mic Oh, he's out, Mike. I can't say peace. I can't say peace. (laughs) I can't say peace. Peace. See ya.